Yeah, thanks to you for joining on Twitter Space number 45. And where we talk Evergrow, Lucro, um, you know, Luna Sky, upcoming utilities such as Atlas Wallet. And now I know we're going to have Lucro games too. That can be interesting to see. I'm curious to know what games people think is going to be released. These said they simple games. I wonder if it's going to be like a like a Galaga game or you know like Pac Man or something. And I wonder how it works exactly because some of these games are copyrighted, right? Like Konami and all that stuff had the rights to these. Does it expire over time? And so, like, if the game's 25 years old, is it open to anybody to to develop and, and use those games? There is Mr. Black right now. I will go ahead and invite Mr. Black to be a co-host. And we see Drakeus is in here, too. Thanks for joining, man. Appreciate the support, as always. Cody, how are you today? And we have Rocket as well. I'll go ahead and give Rocket, if you're able to make it. Steve, good afternoon. And afternoon people, to you. People of the space, good afternoon. Yes. Hope you all are well. How are you, sir? I'm very, very well. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to do the space today with everything that was going on with Twitter, but it looks like we're all systems go. Valid concern, my man. Valid mm-hmm. concern. In the event that, let's say, Twitter spaces didn't work or something, do you think we should go to something like Discord, or should we do it live on YouTube or something? What do you think? I'm going um, to Discord. Yep, I'm a Discord fan myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easy to use. Rocket, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Very well. Thanks you for making it today. Totally. I, your, I have your... access to the soundboard now. That was a mistake. What was that? Oh, you made me co-host. So I have access to the soundboard now? That was a mistake. <laughs> this, this oh, is... my gosh. Do we? It's on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go... The Bard, he's looking to be a speaker too. So how do you guys want to do this? Do you want to get right into news or do you want to kind of get to the meat and potatoes and talk about Luna Sky? I know uh, a lot of people are anticipating it and um, kind of wondering where things are at. So it's totally up to you, depending on your guys' schedule. I know your, your weekends are very busy. I was going to say, it's your show, my friend. Why don't you just keep driving and we will just ride. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Bard, how you doing? Yeah. I'm good. Real quick on your question on copyright, Steve. Um, yeah. It's the life of the creator plus 70 years. Great. So um, if you guys missed it, I was asking about the whole issue with uh, Lucro games. So, you know, they were designed to be a simple game. And I was wondering if there was any like copyright infringement for certain games, like where, you know, how some like patents or expire after a certain time, like medication, for instance, after so many years, you can actually produce generics and stuff. Does it work? Uh, how does it work with gaming, uh, with simple games? Like, do you need any permission to use those things? Uh, that's what we're doing. It's, uh, they should very well be in the uh, public domain. That's not an issue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rocket. You sound kind of like you're in the, the tunnel effect. Oh, I am in the tunnel. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thanks it, for joining us. It should be for what we're working on because it's, uh, this should be well in the public domain. I'm not worried about that. Could you? Yeah, he, he. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was no, going to reiterate if that was hard to understand. Yeah, I couldn't really hear. He said that it shouldn't be an issue for what we're working on because what we're working on is in the public domain. Understood. Great. Or wor- working with, maybe we'll say. Yeah. Is in the public domain. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, we'll get right into uh, Bard. Did you have anything you want to like add to that in terms of uh, the game thing? Because you, you kind of brought it up too. No, no. no go go ahead. ahead. Ooh, thanks again for joining, guys, for Space Number Forty Five. Like I said, we always talk about, you know, Evergrow, Lucro, uh, Luna Sky NFT Marketplace, and um, Alex Wallet, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, hopefully there's more things that, as we time goes on, we get to you know, talk about more and more things related to Evergrow. So let's get into the news first, because um, it was kind of interesting. We talked the last two weeks about BlackRock and all that stuff, and of course it's coming up again, right? So uh, the, uh, the article from Coin Telegraph. The SEC says spot Bitcoin ETF filings are inadequate. The regulator told NASDAQ and CBOE that BlackRock, Fidelity, and other filings are not clear and comprehensive. This is according to a report by the Wall Street Journal. This after investors and analysts speculated that the bid by BlackRock could be a catalyst for a spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. Bitcoin tumbled below 30K. I believe it is 
back above Zach. What do you make of this? It all comes down to the surveillance sharing agreement, right? And that's what is reportedly in contention here. The SEC has long voiced concerns that the Bitcoin spot market is subject to market manipulation. And therefore, it's rejected a lot of previous Bitcoin ETF applications on those grounds. So the thing that got everyone all excited was that BlackRock had come to this surveillance sharing agreement with some major players in the space to make sure that they could, again, assuage some of the SEC's concerns about market manipulation and price manipulation in the spot Bitcoin market. Now, according to these sources, they didn't do it well enough. I guess it gives a little bit of room for these uh, these issuers to come back and say, no, here's how we can beef this thing up and meet your concerns. But it does sort of uh, counteract the recent narrative in the recent weeks that this was an inevitability because we had these things in place. It sort of suggests that, hey, maybe we might see another round of rejections, which we've seen for years prior. So really interesting if these sources uh, do indeed uh, know this to be the case, that that's really what it's going to come down to is, again, these these uh, these surveillance sharing agreements that BlackRock, Fidelity, and others are baking into their applications this time around. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I honestly think that this is pretty fascinating. And I like it in many ways because it's kind of a lose-lose for the SEC right now. First off, it is worth noting that we found out that they were unhappy with this application like two weeks after the applications went in, like a week, week to two weeks after the applications went in. That's really atypical. Again, what has been normal for the SEC has been to drag these out, to delay them, and then they finally get to the spot where they can't delay it, and then they reject it. So this is kind of like, this is a little unusual just from that perspective. But look at it from the SEC standpoint, right, uh, through my cynical lens, which is that the SEC doesn't really want to have any spot Bitcoin ETFs, because when you have a spot Bitcoin ETF, unlike a futures ETF, it means that money that goes in to get exposure to Bitcoin is actually taking Bitcoin off of the market and is storing it in some place that all other things being equal actually adds demand to the equation. The SEC in the U.S. doesn't really want that. They want Bitcoin to kind of just go away and these tokens to kind of just go away, especially Bitcoin, though, because they, they represent a threat in some ways. So when you're looking at these rejections, you have to kind of look at it through that lens. And when BlackRock comes and they apply and they have a, you know, a track record of like 500 approvals for every 100 rejection, you kind of like the assumption has to be there that they're going to approve it just because, again, history suggests that they will. So when you look at this situation, you're looking, again, a regulator that doesn't want to approve any of this type of instrument. And so they're looking for reasons to reject it. Now, the rejection itself was actually quite weak, uh, you know, to the extent that the Wall Street Journal reporting is true. Essentially, what they said was, hey, tell us what the exchange is. Give us more details on the surveillance agreement. So that's not necessarily like, oh, no, this isn't allowed. That's like, hey, we want more details. Um, so <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's actually very funny. And I'm quite curious to see how this plays out, because I think that the SEC is in large part trapped, where they'll have to either acknowledge that they just don't want to do this, which they have not yet been willing to do. Or on the other side, they'll grant it to someone like BlackRock, and then kind of the all the concerns that come along with it happen. So I think it's great. And I'm really into it. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> what, what do you think? Well, yeah, I thought the same thing. Uh, same point with the delay here was kind of odd because normally there's that 75 day comment period where they have to like take it in, digest it, and then they can issue something. And historically, we've seen them drag it out to the end there and then they reject it. And that's why it's taken so long historically to have these ETFs go through, right? So when we had the BlackRock one go through, we had multiple others also file, Fidelity being the latest one, right? That was a big news item last week and it was confirmed yesterday. This issue seems to be around the surveillance agreement, according to the Wall Street Journal reporting. And I think that ties back into these market structures where Bitcoin exists on top of, right? So if you think about Coinbase or Binance or Huobi or OKX, the market makers for these markets are typically firms that tie in and start working on the back end and providing liquidity for market to trade. Sometimes, however, these exchanges do that themselves. That was a big thing with the Binance uh, SEC lawsuit that came out the other day was that an entity uh, that is owned by Binance's CEO, CZ, is market making on top of Binance. And I don't think the SEC likes that. I don't think a lot of people like that in traditional exchanges where your market maker is also owned by the exchange, right? They might think that that's unfair. And so I think that is maybe what the SEC wants here is more information about who's creating this market, where the surveillance is coming from. My understanding is that Coinbase is the one providing this information on behalf of NASDAQ, and that seems to be it. But I think we, they want more information to be able to move this forward. Zach? 
Uh, no, I think you're absolutely right. I saw Jen's hand, so I want to get her uh, on the record. What do you think, Jen? Yeah, I just wanted to say on the flip side of the coin, this atypical situation, Adam and Will, that, that you brought up could be good that the SEC has responded so quickly. I mean, asset managers now have time to like respond to these comments and refile. Previously, it's taken so many days. The entire process takes more than 200 days. And so I think that this atypical situation could mean that there is some change, could mean that there's some flexibility, and could mean that they're willing to work with those that are filing these ETFs. So I don't see it as a total negative sign just yet. And it looks like the market doesn't either. I mean, Bitcoin dipped just below 30K, but it's like it's back up. It's been there for weeks since we've learned about the filing of BlackRock's ETF. And so I'm waiting to see on what's going to happen with this one, Zach. I'm kind of with you on that, Jen. I think that my gut would sort of be along those lines as well, right? Like BlackRock, I think is the largest ETF issuer in the world, right? They know the process. And this seems to be part of the engagement process with the SEC, potentially in terms of getting this thing over the line. But it really does boil down to the surveillance sharing agreement, as many have pointed out with the BlackRock application. Uh, another article from Coindesk, it was related to Alchemy Pay. So apparently Alchemy Pay has added uh, to MasterCard's service provider list. Uh, if we, this is an article. It was actually a sponsored article by Al Alchemy Pay, too, so just be aware. If we learn anything from crypto space in the last year, it's this. Trust matters. In the wake of the fiascos like FTX, Celsius, and Three Hours Capital, many people are un understandably less likely to blindly trust a crypto company. Perhaps crypto was once the wild, wild west, but now there's an emphasis on compliance, solid book bookkeeping, and assurances that a company is on the up and up. Anarchy is out, order is in. One way to earn trust is to get vetted by a reputable financial institution, which is why notably uh, Alchemy Pay, a gateway between fiat and crypto, has been given the stamp of approval of sorts by a trusted brand in finance, MasterCard. Specifically, Alchemy Pay has approved and added uh, to MasterCard's SDB Compliance Registered Service Provider List. SDP stands for Site Data Protection, as in keeping customers' data safe and secure. This provider list is packed with other well-known names in the payment space, including Amazon, Google, and JP Morgan. Each of these MasterCard clients are obligated to comply with MasterCard's rules of standards. Translation, this gives customers confidence the company is legit. There is quoted to saying, uh, our inclusion in the MasterCard SDP program demonstrates our commitment to operating within the bounds of the regulatory frameworks, said Robert McCracken, Alchemy Pay Ecosystem Lead. Ultimately, though, it's the consumer that benefits from seamless access to blockchain finance via global payment standards like MasterCard. Early in the year, Alchemy Pay was listed by another blue chipper as a payment service provider, Visa. This aligns with Alchemy Pay's mission of being a gateway or bridge that facilitates transactions between fiat and cryptocurrency. Visa and MasterCard are pillars of the fiat world, so working with them makes the on-ramps and off-ramps smoother. And this mission is now global. MasterCard has been a key component in our global payment network success, and we're now more global than ever, says McCracken. With Alchemy Pay, Visa and MasterCard holders can now use fiat to purchase cryptocurrencies in 173 countries. This is not a tiny market, as Visa has roughly 3.9 billion cardholders, while MasterCard has about 1.55 billion worldwide. Suddenly, crypto is easier for the average person to get across the planet, even if they don't live in a wealthier nation. You can catch uh, the rest of this article in, at Coindesk. Alchemy, like I said, did sponsor that article for Coindesk. Probably, I assume, to get the word out. So I thought it was kind of interesting. If you guys want to comment on that, by all means, just jump in. The... Next uh, thing was actually scams. So we kind of try to cover scams a little bit each week, if at all possible. This one involving a fake personal relationship. So according to a report by a local media outlet, WCVB, Scott, a man from South Boston, began an online relationship with another man. They talked extensively about various topics, including work, food, and a friend's injury. Eventually, the topic turned to trading profits of Scott's online, in quotations, friend. Scott said he refused to give money to the other band. And so that's when the scammer started saying, no, no, you don't give it to me. You establish your account and I'll guide you. 
after making impressive returns on a small $500 investment, which he was able to withdraw, Scott eventually decided to bet $300,000. For those who have studied this type of fraud, the chain of events is all too familiar. Now Scott, despite having a million-dollar balance displayed on his account, could not access the funds. Each time he tried to withdraw, the scammer offered an excuse and asked for additional funds. The trick is, even when you like invest just a small amount, right, just to test the system, you think what you're doing is making really good profits because you're, you know, you're being shown these balances, right? You know, and so therefore you believe in what you're seeing and that the withdrawal you made successfully is just part of the scam. So it kind of makes it feel like it's a legitimate, um, you know, hey, I got money out, I made money on this, right? So it must be a good thing. So most people go in all at, uh, go in all in at this kind of point because, you know, they want to take advantage and, you know, get their money, you know, as much as possible. So the, it generally relates to romance scams, but they call this, uh, I think Rocket has used this term before, pig butcher. So it actually originated, I've never heard of this phrase before, from the uh, Chinese phrase, Sha Zhu Pan which this, uh, the, means that the scammer must first fatten up the victim before stealing their money. So most people consider this kind of, like I said, a romance scam, but essentially you're building up the victim's confidence and building relationship first. The relationship usually starts out like fi- other side of finance and crypto, and the scammer tries to find a common interest with the victim and then just build on that, right? Sometimes it takes a little time. The scammer has one goal, though. Develop a relationship with the victim by whatever means possible, and once they have feel that they have kind of developed that close relationship, they spring the scan on them. It's really, really insidious, you know. Um, the victims don't always lose their money, but the betrayal can have like long-term event- effects on their kind of mental state. So, you know, when you usually read these articles about these scams, you rarely ever hear them following up with the victims afterwards. You just hear about the scam itself, right? Um, I've heard of victims like kind of isolating themselves, kind of slipping into depression because they essentially blame themselves, right? Most people think they're pretty smart and wouldn't fall for a scam. But these scammers are professionals. And the more people they scam, the better they become at it. So just please be careful out there. As always, never share your wallet seed phrase with anybody. Be careful of phishing emails, links, and untrusted trading platforms. You know, um, with us being so close to release of like these multiple utilities, you got to be vigilant because... Um, you know, especially with like impersonators on Twitter or fake accounts, all that stuff. Um, you know, these official accounts will never direct message you first. So just be really careful, guys. I know we've talked about you know, these kind of scams before, but we, you just can't you just can't let it kind of like, oh, I forgot about that. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, we've talked about this before. Um, you got to keep it fresh in your mind, especially when we're talking about. You know, this is your you know you're holding your you're holding your crypto right, and for a lot of people, this is a significant amount of money money that they probably especially during this bear market you know think hey maybe i should pull it out you know times are not the best right now costs are going up you know, food's getting more expensive you know i'm um, just here in san diego i mean i'm I'm seeing like you know people say like you know inflation at 10 to 15 percent. i'm seeing like 50 percent increase on things it's it's a struggle you know and so people are looking at that as their little nest egg that will pay off for them in the future you lose that imagine how how that could affect you right so, um, yeah, let's get into Luna Sky. Um, so, base, what we've been said in the past base, we had a pretty good feeling that Luna Sky V2 would be out by the end of the month. Um, we know, based on what was announced last week, that uh, kind of a full on bug bash had started. Um, maybe Cody or Rocket, if you're more than welcome to kind of give us kind of a progress update and how things are going with that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, things are going well. Obviously, we're building, you know. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We've got a great uh, bug bash team, and they've been doing the user acceptance testing for the past week or so. We've had some hurdles, you know. Uh, we've had some speed bumps. Um, we've had some successes. You know, that's how those things go, and that's why that UAT is so important. Absolutely. And, and the UAT is the last step before the launch, you know, the user acceptance testing there. So it's been great. Um, we still have daily meetings with the devs. There are multiple changes ongoing. There are some things that we have learned along the way with, um, you know, uh, other aspects of the platform that are incorporated, uh, some of which you all may be aware of because they're kind of out there right now. Speaking specifically about Wallet Connect, things like that, IPFS, um, 
Wallet Connect has its own thing going on, of course, with decommissioning the, their V1 version and releasing their V2 version just a few days ago. They've got their own hiccups that they're working through, so we hope to see some of those things resolved ASAP. Um, that won't delay us from launching, so I don't want anybody to worry about that. We're not going to delay the launch if Wallet Connect V2 continues to have some, you know, some hiccups and stuff. So no worries there. But yeah, it's going great. Uh, you know, like, for example, I made a little leak today, or I don't want to call it a leak, but just a, a feature video. Um, and I said in the comments, because I forgot to mention it in the actual tweet, that uh, there will be some UI updates ongoing. And there's some back-end UX stuff, too, that's being updated. But a few minutes later, I literally looked, and there was a UI update. <laughs> and I was like, dang it, why didn't I make that video just a few minutes later? <laughs> um, nothing big, but some, some little things that we requested that we wanted in there. We just saw the push come through you know, on our test side. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, things are going really well. Is the uh, Wallet Connect issue related to like uh, things related to PCS V3 or anything like that? Or is it something different? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know specifically, but clearly they've got some things going on with it. Um, I mean, they had it out for a bit, but they hadn't decommissioned V1 yet. Yeah. So they just decommissioned that on, I think, the 28th. So. Yeah. But they're a huge company. I trust that they're doing their due diligence to rectify those things. They had that space the other days. I haven't had it. Uh, what was that? Yesterday, I think they had a spaces. I haven't had a chance to go back and listen to it yet, but I plan on it. Oh, I didn't even know. I'll have to go check it out, too. Thank you. Yeah, I'll find the link. Somebody posted it somewhere. I was like, oh, cool. I think it may have been Drake Fist or one of the guys posted it. Right. So uh, I've seen a few comments that, you know, um, people have, kind of said, you know, oh, well, we missed the deadline or something like that. And I just, you know, you've never said, you know, by this date, it's going to happen. I've heard you being optimistic about the end of the month, and we were going with that, right? Um, obviously, you know, being, you guys, you know, with the last week being bug testing, it's not pretty realistic that it would be the end of the month, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we never set a finite expectation on a date. Yeah. I certainly have been optimistic about the date, um, and I still am very optimistic about the date, whether it was today or it's in a few days or whatever. You know, right. so um, doesn't doesn't really concern us because we know where it's at. You know, right. I do understand. Um, I do understand some people's you know trying to put myself in their shoes. I understand where they're coming from to a degree, mm -hmm. but we have to be realistic at the same time. It's like, you know, anything that I have said about it up to this point, I still stand by. It. I, the goal was tentatively, you know, before July 1st, uh, that's today. That was a tentative goal. You know, obviously it's development, so it's tentative. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is coming along really well. I'm trying to be really careful. You know, you can tell yeah. what I say because it's like everyone gravitates on those things, which is understandable. Again, I recognize that. But at the same time, I don't want to also just be an echo chamber and say, it's really close, guys. It is coming really well, everybody. Yay. <laughs> but those things are true. Like, it is. It is really close. It is coming along really well. It's amazing how much work goes into this type of thing. I, I, I think we've spoke about this multiple times. I mean, I, I think about this more than ever now, the vast amount of things that uh, it takes to actually build something like this. It, it's wild. And I... I feel like also, and I think this is a good thing, I learn new things about it every single day being involved in it. Um, I'm grateful for that, and I think that's important, too, to call out because it, it, it's ever-changing. It's, you know, like we've talked about development before in, in, in this space. It's so new that you don't have tenured companies that have been building these things for years exactly. or decades. Yeah. yeah. You can have a very experienced, tenured developers, full stack guys, solidity guys, and, and, and but this is still very infant. You know, building something like a marketplace with unique features is a new thing. You know, there is not a rule book for this stuff. There is not a template. You know, I mean, you could do a template version like you could a website, but you understand my point. Sorry, right. there's so much to it. It's amazing. I mean, and I was thinking about this too the other day. There's been hundreds, hundreds of meetings, you know, with us and the devs. Hundreds. And that's pretty wild to think about, you know. The, the journey that's gone in. Yeah, yeah. The journey of the marketplace really has been a year long journey. And we spoke about this too multiple times. It's no secret, you know. We started with one team. Um, that was a version that was not publicly released as a beta. We decided to move on to a new team. That was a 
the beta release. And we decided at that point that that wasn't going to be enough. It wasn't sufficient for, you know, what we wanted to produce and what we wanted to put out. So we moved on to the final team and it's absolutely everything. And then some we could have ever asked for. So when it does come out, it'll be great because it's going to be a lot more than just a pretty website, a beautiful design, et cetera. The functionality of this thing is the main purpose of it. And that's why we've ensured to take the time with the right people uh, for the job. And it's going to be all about that functionality. It'll look good too. I mean, it's going to be a looker and a shaker, y'all. Right. Are you familiar? Um, is construction is kind of my background. Are you familiar with what's called design build? I am. So would you say that like, you know, the Atlas wallet and Luna sky is, is very much a design build kind of concept. You Can you movie? hear me? Yeah, I think right. so. I lost the half part of the last part of what you said. Do you think that Luna Sky in particular is is kind of a, a like like a design build? I'll go into what for those people who don't know what design build, I'll go into that in detail. But do you think that is an accurate description? Oh, gotcha. So basically, um, from what I know about design build, do you, do is it a, a, a contract about single entities, right? So design build literally means here's the architect. I submit the plans. Right. This is what it's going to look like. But we really don't have a 100% clear idea how we're going to get there. So we know the engineering has been done. We know, like, we obviously have the calcs in and all that stuff. But there's, you can't know everything until you start you start building it. And then you run into all these, like, conflicts and all that stuff. You can design all you want. You can put it on AutoCAD and all that stuff. And you think you've got it all nailed in. But as the building starts to go up, you've got to change and pivot to adapt to what is going on in the field real time. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, everybody. Um, we've even talked a lot about this throughout the year. That's why you get a lot of questions like, why can't you just put it out? Well, because you have to adapt as it's being built as you go along. You have a design up front you work with. You have a, a really solid concept of how to build something from the development standpoint. But there is not a finite template or a rule book for it. Even with those aspects in place, there are going to be things that uh, have to change along the way because you have to adapt. So it is going to be a bit malleable as you go. You know, That's another reason that uh, things like this are unique and unique builds. You know, it, it, it takes being able to modify as new technologies come out or other ones get decommissioned or whatever. You know? You're learning new techniques, features that you want to incorporate, how to do those in the best way, the safest way, et cetera. So, yeah, there's a lot of change as you go through the build process. If you were to go back in time, like, let's say thinking back in maybe six to nine months ago, right? Um, is Luna Sky V2 what you envisioned it would be back then? No, because now we know so much more about um, Web3 in general. We know so much more about uh, building an NFT marketplace. And the reason is, is because we have the right team building it. That's why. Now, if we had had that team six months ago, then I believe we'd be in the same place just six months ago. But all paths led to here. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Um. I was curious, what do what are people um, who are on the, I know they have NDs, but what's the kind of overall feedback you're getting from the people who are testing, uh, bug testing? It's a good question. You know, I don't want to speak too much for them, but I mean, obviously, I, I, could, I think I could summarize that because we're all doing this together. Um, from what I can tell, I believe that they really like it. I think that they see that it's a massive improvement and it's night and day in comparison, you know. Um, from the functionality aspect of it, it's night and day. From the look of it, well, it's night and day as well, you know, cosmetically. I think everyone that's using it now immediately understands why it's taken so long. Yeah, that's there you go. Right? It, it, it makes sense, right? It's like, okay, here's what we had, and here's what we built. Yeah. And, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's actually quite comforting, <laughs> you know, yeah. because you're like, oh, well, you know, I, I can see, you know, I, I knew what I was, you know, getting into, and there's no surprises, then you probably miss something. But if you're, if you're telling me, that yeah, like, wow. A lot of folks kind of still think that, you know, they, they've seen the beta and they think, okay, well, it's going to be similar to that, just maybe better design, mm -hmm. pretty, maybe a little smoother. Uh, it, it's completely different. Like, it's, it, I've said it before, it's uh, unrecognizable. Yeah, in every way, and not just in a visual way, you know. 
It's what's under the hood. Heck. The things under the hood are what's so unrecognizable about it in comparison. Or I guess things you can't even compare to that beta, you know? And he makes such a great point. It's like, and that's what's tough being on the inside because you can't go out and just show everybody that because it's not ready to release. Right. The bug bashers get to see that. And to Rocket's point, they say, oh, we get it now. And, and I think that that was uh, really well put, Rocket. Right. That's was there any, I, I don't know if you can speak, was there anything unexpected during the, during the, the bug bash you were kind of like, oh, I didn't anticipate this was going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Like every other second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of the point, though, but that's the good thing about it. You know, yeah. that's why having fresh eyes on it is so important. You know, Rock and I have been down in this trench for so long that it, it's having those new eyes, that new set of eyes on it. Yeah, it brought out a lot of things, not just functional things, but, you know, feature requests. Just, hey, you know, what if you had this thing right here look like this or maybe this other thing? You know, it's like, hey, it's a great, it's a great idea. Let's submit that. So, yeah. The best designers for your product are the people who use your product. Boom. Well said. Fact. You know, so, yeah, it's, that's, that's really amazing that you guys are working so close with, you know, people who, who probably we would stand to benefit the most from, from that. So it's Yeah. Cool. One thing, too, I'll mention about that, it's evolved in that way quite a bit, too, since the very beginning of this build. You know, it's like, just like you said earlier, um, you know, you have a design. You have some functionality aspects of how you're going to start putting these things together and how contracts work, et cetera, et cetera. But then it all starts changing as you go along because you've got to navigate this whole new area that you're exploring. Uh, so naturally, things are going to adapt a bit, and they did, including design. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I know, Rocket, you put out a tweet there just uh, probably about a day ago. You said that um, with Luna Sky launches right around the corner, I'll be posting a series of tweets over the next few, and you put in brackets redacted, so that you can prepare for launch date. Now, to be clear, I am not giving a launch date, and I will not be confirming or denying when the launch is. And in a follow-up, you said, Trust Wallet is terrible for NFTs and is very difficult to code for. It may work, but not well. MetaMask is superior, specifically the integrated mobile browser, so get familiar with it. So I think that was a good little hint you were giving somebody. You also followed up with that one is Wallet Connect recently introduced V2 uh, and as of yesterday completely discontinued support for V1. This means that all DApps built in with V1 are broken and V2 is so new that the bugs associated with it are making a nightmare to navigate within the min with minimal support. I expect that and I, it looks like I got cut off that tweet. I couldn't find the rest of it. But you did link a screenshot for MetaMask. Can you continue on that thought? Yeah, I kind of covered most of it there. Do you have any questions about that? I mean, the, the bulk of it is you have um, Wall Connect V2. So they, they basically made something new, and now we're forced to use it. Regardless of the bugs it has, we they discontinued support for the old version that was working. So we're kind of stuck trying to figure out how to play nice right. with uh, V2. And if you do a search I was for fun... I did a Twitter search for Wallet Connect, uh, and you can just see the flood of people <laughs> just complaining. It, it's beautiful, so it, uh, it, it was comforting to see we're not alone in this. Who, um, with Wallet Connect, what like what company is that that kind of runs that or owns it? Or I'm not sure the parent companies. I think Wallet Connect might be their okay. own thing. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, Sam actually followed up with that too uh, for support for you guys. So it's, uh, he said, um, so Cody Black and Rocket EDC just gave me a sneak peek at the latest Luna Sky NFT iteration with a lot of emojis and they were good. Uh, it's so close, guys. Just hang on a little bit longer while the team works out a few of the last bugs. When you see all the advanced features and improvements over the beta version, you'll understand with a thank you kind of a, and a heart. So yeah. Um, I think everybody's just kind of eagerly anticipating that because it's kind of, I sort of, sort of feel like we're kind of, that's the beginning of all the utilities launching, right? You know, I, I consider Lucro a utility, so, but just for the sake of simplicity, you know, uh, a functioning kind of marketplace, so then Atlas Wallet and then the staking and all that stuff. I just feel like once we start this, I feel like we're building momentum. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not um that's the thing, right? Once we launch, I mean we're not 
<laughs> we gotta get right on to uh, doing the first update. Like, there's a lot of fun stuff. What well, you guys it. just aren't going to Cancun yeah. or nothing after this, or? <laughs> nope. The work, <laughs> the work goes on. Work never <laughs> stops. We don't got time for all that mess. We're not in. We're not here for that. <laughs> One day, take a vacation. I, I mean, I gotta go pick the kids up at grandma's in Florida, but that's not really gonna be a you know <laughs> vacay. <laughs> so that doesn't count. Right on, Zelda. Yeah. How you doing? Zelda, hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, how's everybody doing today? Doing good. Hey how there, you? everybody. Might be a bit of a delay. Or you can't hear me. He's delayed, I think. All good. Yeah, um, to your point, though, Steve, real quick, uh, uh, until Zelda's back. Uh, just like we've talked about before, I mean, still very confident Luna Sky is going to come out before anything else. And I, I, yeah, I think we all believe it is the start of it. You know, also you mentioned like Ucro, uh, Lucro being the utility. Yeah, I mean, it is. But technically, not until it's actually in use in, you know, the, in the wild. You're absolutely right. It was actually Luna Sky that became the first utility to use Lucro. So. Yes. You know, in the testing, we've used it. And then once Luna Sky launches and people are using Lucro, it will be live in the wild forever and that'll be it you know um again i think that the path goes this way as far as just where we are with all the builds luna sky evergrow staking uh atlas wallet lucro gaming They're, again tentative that could change a little bit but i don't believe the first two will change at all good yeah i can't wait um that will that'll put a lot of things to bed in terms of you know because there's so many projects out there that say they have this that are working on this and they're building this and um yeah. and such a crypto is there's so much uncertainty in crypto that i think a lot of people just want to grab onto some certainty something give me something you know that i can believe in because yeah, I get just, that. yeah and uh so you know we've been we've been kind of at this for a while so i think people are just kind of like once they once the utility gets launched and they actually start to use it, and I think, I mean, not that not that beta is is a bad thing. It's just that it, it's limited to what it can do, and this will be superior in every way. Yeah, the beta wasn't something we could really promote externally. It just wasn't there, yeah. for, for being honest. Um, it was useful for what we used it for, but it wasn't utility we could share. It couldn't really compete with. Um, so yeah, this is it. I, I've never been to OpenSea until I played around with with Luna Sky uh, beta. So, but it just, you know, even back then, it just, it just couldn't compete on the same level. Is what you're saying. Oh, you still, are you guys still there? Yes, I'm still here. Good. good. I was just waiting for him to see if he answered. <laughs> yeah, no, it can't compete. You know, it's the beta, just like you said, it wasn't there. That's why we decided to build a new one, not try to fix something, you know, with tape and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, It'll be really interesting and fun, too, for users that have only ever used the beta. I think that'll be a lot of fun for them when they start using the full launch version because it's going to be vastly different. The, you know, the workflow, the process, how it actually works, minting, et cetera, on the new platform is going to be very different than the beta, um, rightfully so. So, And we'll be there to help along the way, of course. You know, but that'll be a lot of fun, I think, for folks who have never used another marketplace besides that beta. They will have a little bit of acclimation period, I imagine, with some learning curves. But we're going to be there to help, you know, help that along the way best we can. Yeah, we got so used to the workaround for the bugs and the beta. Like you know, your wall connect would pop up twelve times every page you turn. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a breath of fresh air. Right yeah, now. and I mean, essentially, also going from like uh, an ERC. 1155 to 721 platform i mean it's going to be very different you know for those users but it's for their benefit you know and we're going to see that some of those same features are incorporated later on down the line that they are used to um obviously the working ones right <laughs> um, yeah yeah um yeah the point to be able to scale because really you know if we make something niche for our community that's great but it, it will have been a waste of money if it's just for us it has to scale but we're building something to scale. That's right. And my son has a take on that, apparently. Yeah, that's right. That's why this platform is a traditional ERC 721 platform, as it should be, because that can scale. We'll ensure that 1155 is incorporated, you know, um, but there's a lot of reasons behind that. And there's you know, t Functionally, there's a lot of reasons behind that as to why. Good stuff. 
Zelda, did you have a question for the uh, for Cody or Rocket? No, I'm good. I'm just here listening and here to talk if it need to I be. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'll so, say this. Let, let's real quick, if I may, I just want to thank Zelda because he is one of the bug bashers. So thank you, sir. You have been killing it along with several others like Drake Fist and Hyper and Mario's. And the, um, and the bug bashers. Yeah, the bug bashers. Um, are doing a fantastic job. They're out there and you know, some of them and other ones you may not know. So we'll make sure you do though. Yeah, everybody give uh, give Zelda a round of applause for, you know, the hours of work that's going in to help you guys. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh yes. There it Beautiful. Is. It's so well timed. These guys also, everyone, they're not only involved in the bug bash for the marketplace. They're involved. Uh, a lot of them are also involved for the Atlas wallet testing, Steve included. So, um, a lot of these folks are on both of these teams just putting in a lot of time, volunteering a lot of their time, you know, to do this stuff. So can't thank you all enough for it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys no, have been invaluable, invaluable. It's, it's interesting being, being a tester and, and not only just doing what I'm doing, but they, you know, it was, uh, with playing around with it, but I get to see the comments that, that everybody uh, else is leaving and, and, uh, yeah. you know, things that I'm, wow, I didn't even think of that. Like that is, that is how on earth did they find that? And yeah. uh, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Hawkish, too. Hawkish has been there. Hawkish is with us. He was the first one we brought in. Actually, Hawkish is one of the admins on Discord. He's an OG. He's been around a long time. Most of you know him. Um, Hawkish came in with us as the very first one before we actually opened the bug bash. We wanted to get a third person who was unaffiliated uh, to have a, a you know, fresh set of eyes on it. This was probably, I don't know, a couple of weeks before we opened up the bug bash. Uh, so he was invaluable for us right there to prep opening the bug bash and then opening the bug bash. What we did was we didn't just open it up and say, here you go. You know, we wanted to make sure they were as set up as possible, as comfortable and knowledgeable about the new platform as possible. So we did several preview sessions with them. We got together with them. We streamed it for them. We three sessions. Yeah. Three times. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, um, but I, it was very important for us just from the management sense to make uh, uh, or point of view to make sure that they, you know, could go in with as much knowledge as possible to start testing. Um, therefore, avoiding a little bit of a help desk time frame situation, you know, where Rock and I would be help desk. So it was like, it was great. You know, we had a couple of preview sessions and we basically went over everything. Hey, this page, everything on this page, this page, here's how you do this. Watch me do it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that that was... Uh, a really good move and i'm really glad we did that um you know i think it was very helpful because they were able to get right in at that point and start testing versus get right in learn and as they were testing you know so absolutely thank you ben. i appreciate that um ever going nando i don't think i've ever had you up in the space before welcome how are you doing today ever go nando can you hear us okay oh there sorry you. about that i had my mic off no worries. How are you doing? Good, good. Hey, just a quick question. Um, I've, I'm a huge fan. Obviously, I've put quite a bit of money into, <laughs> into the project, and I'm never one to FUD. But just, I guess, one challenging question I had was, so was there some sort of delay that we were unaware of or something, a, a problem that was run into? Because six weeks ago, you know, they lowered the tax, the comeback campaign started, and we saw a big pump but then nothing followed it, and then it's kind of dipped since then. So I was wondering if maybe there was a an error there in launching too soon, or maybe something unforeseen popped up that caused the uh, the early pump, and then no no support behind it. I think it was a victim of time, um, right? Yeah, the timing. For for me, what I think happened was we wanted to test out the pre marketing to see how that worked out during that uh, little meme rally that uh, we saw on Ethereum which brought some attention to more tokens because a lot of folks from the Web3 space all of a sudden shifted to tokens. Everyone's looking at tokens. So I want to take advantage of that to get some more eyeballs on it. Um, and then not too long after that, BNB FUD started. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense to do heavy marketing during a BNB FUD cycle. So we kind of paused that there. In the meanwhile, you know, testing and building for the utilities happened about you know, that. The SEC too was uh, full on and, uh, yeah. and like bash mode for for BNB. You saw a massive pullback on BNB. Um, that really took the because we were we were talking at the time like around that time you're talking about 
we were we were like really getting starting optimism. Hey, maybe this you know this bear market subsiding. Maybe we're getting back into the bulls. And then the SEC did their thing, and uh, I think it really spooked a lot of people because they were thinking, "Oh man, here we go again." And I, I guess I don't know if there could really be better people. communication with people like me who are investing, have a, a basic sense. But I mean, I don't know those all those layers and how they impact things. So you know, for me, who's put in some money, following the 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 project closely, but not super crypto savvy, if you will. It's like, okay, I see what we're doing here. I see some some momentum. Things must be about to drop. Here we go. And then it kind of went like things just kind of got dark. And that, that marketing push seemed to subside. But no one really said what was happening. It just seemed like it was dying out. And I was like, uh-oh, what's going on? <laughs> so let me ask, um, what is the best way, in your opinion, to keep um, that we keep you informed? Because I do the spaces every week. And I, you know... And then we post on Twitter quite a bit. We're pretty active on Discord, Telegram. What is I guess, I guess, I guess maybe that's. I mean, maybe maybe that's my fault. Is because I don't do the Discord. I try to listen to the spaces whenever I can, but I don't sure. hear all of them. Mainly, what I'm doing is, you know, I'm trying to follow everybody and their mother that's connected to Evergrow on Twitter, and that's where I get most of my stuff. But I guess on Twitter, I never, I never saw a clear. I didn't either I couldn't read between the lines or maybe I missed it because I missed some posts, but I didn't see like why all of a sudden we were pumping and, and there was momentum and all of a sudden the momentum receded. And I, I just, I was left wondering like, what's going on? I don't know why this is happening. Yeah, it was going to be, okay. and, uh, I mean, we were tweeting about it just individually. And uh, uh, I think we all sort of tweet about the situation. But yeah. If you, if you missed that whole news piece of the news cycle, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Why, uh, Everything seemed to be rock and rolling, and all of a sudden the wind is taking out of sales. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, we did some pre-marketing, uh, coordinated, uh, timed with this little uh, token pump that was going on to kind of maximize it, and then just B and B decide to fall off a cliff for a bit. Right, but that uh, that, you know, that wave yeah. did show me, like, I feel like, and you know, maybe it's the eternal optimist in me, but I mean, I believe in the team, I believe in the concept, I know. And, and I felt like that was like a little glimpse of when this finally does hit, I think it's going to be nuts. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how to quantify oh, yeah, I, it. I don't, I, I don't know how to I say how many X it's going to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be way more than we can even imagine. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. And obviously, who knows, right? But not financial advice, but it's it's hard to imagine it not being pretty exciting. Yeah, thanks for letting me ask the question, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, no yeah. problem. It's, it's a valid question. Yeah, always great to hear from you too. Great to you know come up anytime. Um, I, I want to say something real quick to that point. You know, it, it makes me think about this too. I'm actually really glad that we are where we are right now as the company. You know, th- and there's a couple of reasons why, and I guess a couple aspects to that. I, I think like about okay, what if all these things had come out? You know, when we first started projecting for them to come out, and they'd come out when they'd come out. I don't know what things would be like now with them. Obviously, we didn't know what we know then. We you know, didn't know the people we knew then, too, the builders, etc. The markets weren't what they were then versus now. Whether they were even better then or not, that's not really my point, but just in general. Um, I, I think it's a really good thing we are where we are because we are on the cusp of multiple utilities that uh, are going to be coming out back to back. You know, like literally back to back. And I think this is great because, again, I don't think this would have happened last year. I don't think we would have been able to even conceive of, you know, some of these things the way we are now. Again, that goes back to the people we have met along the way. We've started working with developers, et cetera, um, and then just adapting to the you know ever-changing market. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited for that reason alone that I'm really glad we are, we're, are where we are now. Uh, you know, there's multiple things about to come out back to back and they would not have existed a year ago. They wouldn't have come out that way a year ago. They wouldn't have been anything that they could have been now. So pretty exciting when I think about it like that. There's a lot of um, history of projects, right? That um, not necessarily even with crypto, but that have had really solid ideas, really like, uh, but their timing was terrible yeah. and the market wasn't ready for it. And so let's just say six, eight, you know, two months ago, we, we have released a uh, first utility, Luna Sky, let's just say, 
and in let's say the market was just what I'm ready for it and things just kind of fell off, right? The argument would be made, well, it's not a good utility. But there is necessarily wrong with the utility. It's just that the timing was not the best. There may be people that pulled out of crypto. 100%. There are windows of opportunity all the time, right? And not making one of those windows of opportunity doesn't mean a failure. Sometimes exactly. that ends up being a blessing later, later on down the road. And I truly believe that uh, that is a blessing for Evergrow as a company and its ecosystem that it's been working on developing. So, you know, pretty exciting. That's, that's the things that I think about now. It's hard to correlate that sometimes to certain people out in the public, and I totally understand why. They're just kind of out there waiting. Like, where is it? You guys say stuff, you know, what's happening? <laughs> I totally understand that, but I, I'm pretty excited. Awesome. Yeah, I, I appreciate the question because, um, you know, I just, you know, being that I'm involved as I am, I just see, I see the progress, right? I see everything and, you know, and I'm really kind of in discord and I, you know, I pay attention to what's going on. And, uh, but that's my commitment that I've made, right? And so... I just uh, I don't I don't want to say I assume, but I you know I feel like pretty confident on what's being released, what people are talking about. I can spot the good information from bad information, and and I know there's progress being made. I don't ever worry about that. But people do have lives. Like some people just cannot pay as close attention like we do, and I respect that. You know, just they have a life, they have kids, they have jobs, they and all that stuff. And the reason I asked is what could we do. Um, to keep people more informed or better informed. And I think we do a pretty good job compared to some other projects. I agree, 100%. You know, and I'll say this last thing about it, not to echo chamber myself here, but uh, you know, all paths led to right here, right now. And right here, right now is a great place to be. You know, There are multiple utilities that are about to come out. Um, they have been continually worked on for a very long time. They're at that point now where, I'm again, I'm glad that they didn't come out a year ago. Because I don't know where they would have ended up at this point, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, Mario, how are you doing? Mario. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are hey, you? Hey, buddy. What, what time is it in your, at your house right now? About it's around, around 1. one o'clock in the morning? Hey, yeah. Yeah. You're a night owl, aren't you? Or you have kids. <laughs> and <I'm> like, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, we had a, a party. And we have another one tomorrow, and it's been nuts. Really, huh? I'm super tired, but yeah, that's you know the good stuff. Uh, so I I wanted to say a few things like on, on the previous question. Like I mean, it's okay. You will see in this space teams and tokens like, promising stuff and everything, and 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 you know you you get that feeling. Oh, this is this is the one, and uh gonna invest here and there and then all of a sudden like a few months in and everything is collapsing and everything um we we have a you know we, we don't have a great chart we don't have like um these huge green candles and everything but that's just temporary because you know the actual work was being done like uh i don't know like for for a year plus where when we took that turn and um, the team changed, uh, people like within the community started getting getting more and more, you know, responsibilities and and uh, you know you, you you can like when when I joined the backpash from for Luna Sky, I was I was impressed because I, I've been in talks like with with Cody and Rocket, and I saw how you know. How, how these guys work, like the, their ethics and, and, and their methods and everything. Um, so I saw that, you know, on, on this version that we currently have, I, I, like I saw their, you know, their character and, and their knowledge and everything, and, and everything is making sense. And it, it's actually, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit addicted, like, to it, to the platform. Is, is that good? I mean, I, I'm the guy who is... Who, who, uh, I'm addicted to online gaming and stuff, and I, I'm addicted to a platform now. <laughs> like I don't know if it makes sense, but you know, and and you can see like you can see the when the guys say like quality, we want quality products. You you 
you're listening those words like in every other project, but these guys mean it. Like you can see, it. and 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 everyone here, and and every holder, and every investor or visitor or you know um, a user, they will see that. Oh, okay, now this makes sense, and and yeah, there is some serious effort behind this platform. It's not just like overnight they did something, and and yeah, it's true that to to, to make and develop those kind of um, platforms and utilities, yeah, it takes time, but for both, if I'm allowed, Cody, sorry, we are on a very good stage on both of them, especially the, the two versions that we got recently. I would say, like, in my eyes, they're, they're launch ready, but they need that, you know, that click that everything needs to be perfect and, and, and no mistakes because it's, you know, it's... Um, it's investments. It's uh, people like um, uh, people's money and everything. So you cannot make, and you cannot be like, you know, uh, pretty much off. You need to be on point. It works. It clicks. So people will use it, and they will share it, and all this. I think it's safe to say that the majority of people that I know uh, within within Evergrow that you know that actually are here, you know. Or they've spent the time on Discord, they spend the time on Telegram, they spend the time on Facebook, here in the spaces, active on Twitter. They have put an enormous amount of faith in the team and the projects and the utilities because they, ex- I want to say they expect it because that, you know, how could you expect it? But we have a very high standard because we've got to know each other so well. Um, I think there's that relationship that we built with one another, that there's that trust. And so there is an expectation that we're going to build world-class quality products. And, you know, that's where, where we're coming at it from. And so the bar is, is very, very high. And I understand why Cody and Rocket and Sam and, and Paul and everybody else who's supporting, um, they want to deliver, right, for you, the holder, 100%. They do not want to disappoint. And I respect that. You wouldn't believe how much I respect that because – most people would just give you uh, three quarters, maybe half, and they're kind of like, "Yeah, you know, you know, we yeah, we promise we give you something, and you know, it's good, right?" You know, but I appreciate and respect you guys that you're working so hard as much as you are. Um, you deserve a vacation after this, but I know you're not going to stop. You're gonna, it's going to be the next, you know, the next thing. It'll be, uh, you know, V two, but it'll be the next update. So thank you. Thank you so much. Very, very kind words. Um, really appreciate that. And I speak for everybody, you know, and to Marios's point, I have to say to him, Marios, I mean, we wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for folks like yourself, folks like Zelda, folks like Hyper and Drake and Hawkish and, and countless others, folks in the community like Bard and, and like Steve and Evergrow Love and Michael Garber and uh, CWP and, and the list goes on, you know. I would love to name everybody. And you know that I could. And I would if we had time, <laughs> but just know, like, you know, none of this would be where it is if it wasn't for every one of you. Everyone has a critical part in this, a very important and crucial part in all of this. You know, it's not the Paul and Sam show or the Cody and Rocket show. You know, this is the everybody show, you know, and, and you're right, Steve. Yes, we are closest to, you know. Uh, uh, the kitchen, I guess you could say. We're in the kitchen. We're closest to the stove, the, the stuff cooking. but And we do want nothing more but than to deliver. And that means sometimes we have to make hard decisions and we have to say things we don't necessarily want to say, like, hey, I'm sorry, it's not ready. And we have to accept the fact that that's not going to make everyone happy, but it's for the best, you know? Right. So thank you to all of y'all. Thank you for every bit of input all of you all have contributed whether it's your feedback or it's your time or your work or it i mean look at everybody that's in here it's not only new people in the spaces but it's also the same people that here every week mm-hmm. you know it's the same people in the chats it's the same people in the dms and then new people come in and then they become part of the family and they're contributing you people you, you folks don't know how important it is like just your feedback alone we've talked about that many times the differences between FUD and feedback and you see those comments sometimes about like, well, I can't tell my opinion because you'll ban me. And that's not true at all. You know, I seriously encourage your opinion all the time. It's very, very simple. Just be respectful. 
<laughs> it's that easy, you know? It's the same thing we tell our kids. It's like, look, you need to share with me anything that's on your mind. You need to tell me how you're feeling, what's going on. Um, but you just need to do it in a respectful way. And I'll always be there for you. Every one of us will always be there for you if that's the case. And again, a lot of these things are built on that feedback or built on those suggestions or built on those thought processes that people like Bard, you know, spend countless hours doing, you know, um, or, or people like Ever Nando that come up and ask those questions, you know, I mean, this is how we learn this to, you know, this is how we adapt and then eventually evolve. So thank you, everyone. Absolutely. And it's the tough questions too. Some people, you know, um, some people are more polished than others. Some people just, you know, they're just they're as frank as they can be, you know, as uh, subtle as a sledgehammer. And yeah. um, but as long as the question is a, a legitimate question and it and it's asked in a in a way that, you know, you're not coming out and flooding, you know, you're going to get an answer. You know, um, even like I just saw one just not long ago from Dedicated Dad uh, to Sam about um, the uh, the wallet. And he and actually I'll read it. He said I see uh, the positivity from a security standpoint. Can a hacker force interactions with certain tokens, projects to gain access to your wallet? So the question is, will a hacker be able to use this feature to gain entry into wallets by interacting with wallets without consent? This was follow up on Sam talking about how watch wallets, right? Where you can keep an eye on wallets, right? And Sam just came straight out and said, nope, this solution is 100% hack proof. We are effectively drawing information off the blockchain in a way that reproduces the experience of being fully connected to that address without any connection required. And with direct buy options, as long as our partners have that token in their offering, you will be able to do a direct buy into that wallet without a connection to the address being required. It's such a, this little feature right here, um, you know, is like being able to buy and send to somebody else's wallet in one transaction. I've, I've never heard of that before. This is just one little innovative feature that the wallet will have. Um, so... And again, it was a tough question because you know, when you talk about security of people's crypto, people get really defensive because security is hard to find in crypto. It really is. Yeah. It, it, it works. It works. We tested it. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah tell them, Marios. Marios is heavily involved in the Atlas team. I appreciate it. I'm, 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 I'm involved as, as, as much as I can and, and as far as I can. <laughs> If there's more, it's always you know um, welcome. But you know, uh, to to Cody's previous point, is like you need you um, like a token or a project or, or whatever. If you have like a strong hardcore community behind you, like I mean, we have a guy that he has a restaurant, he has an Evergrow burger. I mean, you know, everyone is finding you know his spot here, like in this community, is amazing. Really like is. Steve. Obviously, yeah. Like you're, you're amazing. Like doing spaces, and you're doing spaces. Like um, uh, everyone knew that Rocker was, you know, into NFTs and everything, and now he's obviously working on the platform. Cody has a, Cody is amazing. Okay, he has a like methods and everything, and 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 the the work and stuff. So I cannot, like, you know. So everyone has, um, uh. Like a um, a position into this uh, pro project that you know it clicks. It sh that this guy should be there, and that's right. it. And 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 it works. And more and more people are coming in, and you know they get involved uh, because obviously, if you see that the community is active and doing things and suggestions and everything and feedback and guys, if I can do this like with the merch store, like the community store and everything. So you know, it's it. This is what what we need, and this is what we have, and it's amazing, and and it just it's it's gonna grow. Like um, I th I'm I'm really positive. Like it, it takes time. We I, I don't know how much we will suffer or not, but we are on a pretty much good stage. I'm I'm really positive. It's gonna be good. Thank you. you should never never underestimate the power of a community. Um, we found like you know like you said. Uh, People in various niches within the system, right? You got Bard doing his thing that I get little snippets of. That's you know, and then you got you know the uh, you've got the uh, Evergrow Man Burgers, you know, and uh, you've got all these different people that are coming together from different walks of life, and they're and they're saying, I want to contribute to this thing, right? Um, and it's it's pretty remarkable because this kind of enthusiasm is super contagious. Um, people absolutely love to be part of communities. 
and uh, especially especially when they feel like their contributions make a difference. And here in you know with, with Evergrow, absolutely, if you feel that you can do something with Evergrow and you know support them in such a way that you feel that you can have something to offer, you know we're here for you. You know what I mean? We all want to support you, and you know you just find just kind of find your little way to do it. And we all have a different way of coming at it, right? I think again, so much talent. It really is. Yeah, I agree. An immense amount of talent out there. I just love like conversing with everybody and watching and just reading some of the things y'all y'all talk about. Uh, I just learn so much every day from it. You know? Yeah, it's funny. Bard was I was talking in the Creative Core channel earlier, and I mean, I'd say ninety nine percent of it was over my head. I didn't understand, you know, much what was what he was talking about. Um, but I could see the logic behind it, and you were actually Cody, you were interacting with it. Um, but it made so much sense in its simplicity and ideology that I was like, man, this guy is onto something. I don't know what he's talking about, but he is really onto something. And yeah. Yeah. You want to maybe, maybe talk about that? And maybe you can explain it better than I could. Just kind of a synopsis of the conversation. Do it, Bard. He's a smart guy, y'all. Yeah. He's a cool guy. So I did some experiments last year with NFTs to uh, mess around with the metadata and uh, threw some ideas at Cody and Rocket and tried a few things, a few experiments. And I discovered that it is possible to actually use the NFT itself as a <clears throat> buffer, so to speak, so that uh, when you have an owner and a creator that owns a pair of the same NFT, you can develop uh, encrypted communications between the two of them. And that was the basis of where I was going with that conversation. Wow. And he leaves it at that, the cliffhanger, y'all. <laughs> That's pretty wild. I, I don't I want to elaborate and accidentally spill any beans, but I'm just going to leave it there. It's, it's, it's his show. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to bring up uh, Coach next. Uh, just one minute, please. All right. Give him a minute to just connect to the nice savior. You will be next after that. Thanks for your patience. Coach, how are you doing today? Thanks for being in the space. Looks like he's still connecting. Oh, maybe, yeah. Coach, are you there? Can you... Coach, can you hear us? May... Seems to be a bit of a delay today. Coach, can you hear us okay? Awesome. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up, guys? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just sharing with the code. How is everyone doing here? Very, very well. Do you have a question for Cody Rocket? No, no question. Okay, I'm going to remove you as a speaker. Okay, and I save you. I'm going to bring you up next. So I was uh, noticing that in the comments... Um, people are, um, they're leaving like in the comment section, but because of the thing that's going on with Twitter, it says rate limit exceeded. So I can't actually respond to the questions. My apologies. I'll take a look at them. See if I can. Yeah, I know. Uh, and Frank NFT said something, um, really, really important. And he was talking about, like, about failure. I believe he said, um, yeah. Is it? I know if you have a blue check mark, you can get like up to six thousand or three thousand or something like that. Um, whereas if you if you don't have the blue check mark, you're limited to like three hundred or something. Sounds yeah, it's to a, me like they're it's, trying it's, to force it's... you into. It. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that was it. That was it, really. Yeah, I think it was six thousand and six hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, new accounts is three hundred. Established accounts is six hundred, and blue check mark is six thousand. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, so I Savior, how are you doing today? Thanks for being on the space. I've, I've noticed you've joined, but you've been just kind of lurking in the background, and hopefully you're busy and uh, doing well. You're more than welcome to come up. Do you have a question for Cody or any of the speakers here today? Good evening, all. I hope everybody is okay. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah, it has been long. Um, the last phase I came in, I had, well, I had to sleep off because our time timing yeah. here is very late in the night. It's very late for you right now, isn't it? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, um, first and foremost, um, I think um, I have to congratulate everyone that has been been able to preach EGC in different ways, um, especially even you. I can also see the last one that I saw on Twitter is a, a guy that is doing some working on something on Boga, where the EGC logo and everything is added. There. That is a nice one. So um, basically, I wanted to also ask um, in future because um, the way EGC since I've, I joined the, the this thing, I think after the new team was changed, EGC is. Um, it's not just like an ecosystem that is really is really looking at real life utilities and also looking at it to build as a real company. So um, I want to know whether in the future as we are going further, whether we looked at also establishing um, things in the ecosystem within the EGC ecosystem that is not within the context of crypto that is also generating utility but is still attached to the EGC ecosystem. I don't know whether I want to know that. It's sort of like a, we- a real world bridge between conventional finance and crypto. Is that what you're, you're meaning? Like a yeah, a real world um, utility that might not the fund. That is the utility can be something that is generating fund to the EGC ecos- ecosystem, but not within the twi- That is the 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 crypto space. Like now we have wallet, which is still under crypto. We have an um, NFT marketplace, which is under crypto. But what if we, as we are going forward, we also have a utility that is outside the crypto industry, but also feeding the eco- EGC ecosystem. I think, you know, uh, it was interesting. I was thinking about the last year, probably I say the fall of last year, right? And, um, where people were kind of talking about, you know, Evergrow as a utility, right? You know, being swapped, traded, purchased things with it, right? And it made, you know, at first I thought, you know, that's a great idea, right? But then Sam and the team had said, you know, does it make a lot of sense that uh, a token with a 14% tax be used to buy something, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So the along comes Lucro, right? And fast forward to just a few weeks ago, we have Evergrow or Bust who will accept Lucro for payment for the Evergrow Man Burger. And I'm sure, you know, it's going to be valid, you know, probably for other products too. So that is a real world utility that, that he kind of came up with for Brooks, uh, for Brooks Burgers. So there's no reason that that can't be expanded upon. I'm sure there are probably other people here in the, um, in, that are listening or future listeners who may have a potential utility, real world utility. I'll tell you right now, I'm starting a home inspection business in addition to what I'm doing. And one of the payments that I'm going to make, I'm going to accept Lucro too. And people probably, who knows, maybe down the road, they today they might not use it, but they eventually will. You know, they have the option. That is a real world utility. The more people who accept the token, the more accessible it is, the more people talk about it. Um, even if people say, what is Lucro? Well, that's just a, you know, that is a token that's on the BNB uh, smart chain. And that's what I uh, accept as a payment. And uh, yeah. So now people start asking questions. What is this? Right. So there are plenty of opportunities in the real world. If you're looking for um, maybe other ideas of things, um, or are you thinking of things like outside of that, like maybe like a traditional business? Um, that that uses Lucro in some way, shape, or form. Um, using EGC even at five percent, I I mean I could see it being a little bit more tantalizing, but um, probably not as much as Lucro. Um, what do you think, Cody? Yeah, I agree. I mean, all that's really well said. You know, I mean, there are an infinite amount of opportunities out there to incorporate things into the ecosystem that are outside the bounds of just traditional crypto, you know, and finance. So. Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities there. And I think that that certainly is a goal for us as a company. We, we want to continue to grow, you know, to progress, to innovate. So, Yeah, so, you know, and this is Rocket, right, speaking as Evergrow, but speaking on behalf of Rocket only. Uh, we could open a, a lemonade stand, take fiat payment, and use that for buyback and burn. I mean, at the end of the day, the it's you know, possibilities are limitless. But it comes down to focusing resources and time. And right now, the focus is on 
the utilities there in the pipeline. But yeah, I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't branch out past that later. And right while we were talking about this, Evergrow or Bus just tweeted out, spoke with nowpayments.io, and we will be looking at establishing a virtual point of sale system to facilitate the acceptance of lucro at the restaurants. This needs to go through the lawyers and accountants, but we are hopeful we can soon be the first brick and mortar to accept lucro. Uh, we know this isn't much, uh, but a small increment steps, but the will increase visibility. Everything from Denny's license plate cover to Steve's weekly telecoms helps spread the word. Entering critical few months should be fun and exciting for all of us. Not financial advice. Do your own research. Right there and then. Go ahead, I save you. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I have one question that I want to ask um, Cody. Um, I think he is really um, works on the technical aspect of coding. Um, um, Cody, is it possible for, or is it cost intensive to have an emailing system? Imagine you or oh, having an emailing system that is because I just saw. I saw a news, I think, two weeks ago, the first emailing system that is um, related to crypto. Is it possible or is it really cost-intensive something to set up something like that? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't specifically know. Yeah, I don't know how – well, I guess I don't know how cost-intensive it would be. Um, is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. There's a – if I can jump in, there's actually, interestingly enough, it's Wallet Connect that's toying with uh, some of those uh, – sort of de- decentralized uh, messaging capabilities. Like they have something that's going to beta soon. So it's going to be a while before this is out. But uh, yeah, I mean, that that's going to be a thing. That's just going to be a thing. Very interesting. But uh, Roque, Ro- Roque I, I'm not sure if, if you can do it on BNB chain, but on ETH, I'm pretty sure like you can, get, when you do it a transaction, you can put a note, something like that. Oh yeah, sure, sure. This is actually going to be more, uh, yeah, but, going to be user interface involved. Like it's going to be, it'll feel to the user like a messaging app, essentially, right? It'll work like what you would expect it to, but run in the blockchain. Yeah, so that's that, cool. That's, yeah. that, that's actually imagine using like the transaction, like comment to talk with someone. And you know, obviously, you have some somehow like a DAP or something, and he can actually you know get the message and everything. That's you know, <laughs> that's, that's how nice. you deal with uh, right now. That's how you deal with like hackers and ransomers as you uh, you talk to them on BSD scan um, through the transactions. But uh, yeah, evidently, Wall Connect is working on something to make this you know more user friendly. Uh, should be interesting. Like the question, yeah, yo, send me that NFT. <laughs> basically you got a question um so i played with with helium i still run helium right now uh, like a, a miner right and one of the challenges that they had was as more and more blocks are, are made right so the, essentially you're getting a longer and longer blockchain you know if that's the correct way to look at it where does that does that become a challenge now for storage because you're building on this blockchain and, and of course all these messages are going and all that stuff. Where where does that? Is there a bottleneck? Is I guess sort of curious about the data bottleneck or anything like that because you've got so much data being stored on this. Am I even looking at it the right way? Anyone? 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 So, sorry, we, we, kind we, of breaking we, up. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't catch you. I didn't mean, catch the question really. So, um, is that a little better? I can hear you. I just didn't, I didn't, my, my brain couldn't process what the question was. So with blockchain technology, right? The longer, yeah. the longer the blockchain is basically is the longer it's in existence, the more transactions that are being processed, right? Essentially is more data, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So at what point does it become, well, you think of like Bitcoin, right? So it's harder and harder to mine Bitcoin just because of the very nature of the way Bitcoin was written, right? Um, just, just, just like this whole technology of messaging back and forth using blockchain, does there become a bottleneck where it's just too much data? Well, I don't think it's about too much data. I think it's about too much data at any given moment, gotcha. right? So it becomes network congestion and, and gas fees. You know, like we see, you know, in Bitcoin, whenever they try to do something interesting, like 
BRC twenties or ordinals, you know, you get the massive congestion and transactions take forever and get locked up. Right. So yeah, some changes are gonna be better for that than others gotcha. for sure. Interesting. I was gonna ask guys Xavier, um the ex the answer that we provided for you regarding real world utility, did that satisfy, you know, the question? Or is it were you looking at something different? Okay, um, the thing is that, um, though, you know, the real world, like that um, burger, that Eva Grumman burger, burger is a very nice, um, nice symbol. You know, um, sometimes maybe the idea um, I might portray it might be regional based because um, I see the world as um, there are so many things that can be possibly solved um, with the um, ease of uh, handling it and also the methods. Like um, I was looking at um, a way this um, payment system that we are, that is like, a, you know, crypto now is not really allowed um, in other countries to be used. So I was looking at maybe developing a kind of real world environment where um, even this Evagro ecosystem is run one side as um, a real company outside, which is not related to um, crypto directly, but can also feed in some revenue because um investing in evergro um the way I, I perceive it as I, I also i believe i also think that it should be like that i perceive it is not like um a, a one year or two years something is a long run something that is trying to build because if you look at as sam the ceo that, um, that, that is of evergro now is from a financial world so uh, I think there should be more of financial world should be integrated into the system of this crypto where we can balance in a lot of things. So if you look at, um, let's take an example like stock, even though some stock may be leasing assets, there are some things that they might do within outside that is not within that stock, which still feeds back to the company where individual can also invest in this agro as an ecosystem, but not really in, in, in investing as if it is a crypto based ecosystem. So that is the perception I'm thinking in the longer run, because you might have people now that wants to invest, but when they have they hear that is a crypto, this, 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 but they might uh, have some this thing that is uh, some reservations. So I believe maybe in the longer run we will develop some utilities that people can individually investors can invest on those utilities without having anything to relate with the crypto. While also the ever that is the crypto side is still up and running. To in other words, to integrate these two things will make the company that is a long run, not just looking at. The crypto. Why I'm saying this is that the recent trend and attacks in crypto. I'm not saying that this this um, has not been there, but if you look at the recent trend and attack in the last one year, you observe that there are a lot of people that is coming in. That is an attack on crypto. So if we develop a system, because I'm not for for the facts with what I've seen about the Evergro um, ecosystem, it's not just about um, Evergro. There are a lot of things into it that if we look at the context of what the the, the blueprints now of what Evergro is standing out for, is more than just investing in crypto. So if we can marry the the outside world together, it will be very um, nice. So there's a lot to unpack right there. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, the only thing is, obviously, we, you know, those things are definitely going to cost a lot of money when you're talking about like, you know, brick and mortar style or outside of the industry. And you also need credibility, right? So you need working utilities, you need actual revenue. Um, essentially, even though nothing is easy, we have to do the easy things first, the relatively easy things first, before we can tackle those big problems, right? So we can tackle, uh, you know, more mainstream revenue potentially down the road but right now the focus is squarely on the utilities at hand that's that's really blinders to those things so until they're done it's it's not something that you will do like in a couple of years like to aim that that is really you know as rocket said it's really tough to get it depends and and and, you know what let's say let's say for example um, we have Atlas Wallet running, we have uh, Luna Sky running, and we come into a bull market next year. That could be, I mean, I mean, you know what happened last time we had a bull market. Do you imagine what two running utilities? 
So who knows, right? It's hard to say what could happen in a couple of years' time, but I don't want to put any dates to it, obviously, because it's completely unpredictable. And as things stand currently, it, our best move is to focus on what is in front of us. Absolutely. I just want to check, Cody, do you have to take off? I saw you wave real quick. Do you have to leave or are you kidding? Nope, I'm good. Twitter's uh, just being gotcha. a little buggy for me no as all. So, um... It's the, the the thing is that I, I, I agree, you know, like do the small stuff first and then, you know, explore. But the good thing is that knowing how far you can reach, like f- even Forever Grow, when uh, some uh, in the team took the decision and said, okay, listen, Crater is a far fetched uh, utility to develop right now. So we can start with the basics and evolve and, and, uh, get some revenue and keep growing and, you know, aim bigger stuff later on. So I exactly. guess that yeah, falls have, in the same... Have revenue, you know. And, and coming in and profits coming in. I mean, yeah. you know, doors open up, right? Because now we can invest that in other ventures. Um, For sure. Yeah. But we need to be... And you, know, and you somehow... With the you know, with, right? We don't just give, give money at some random idea. Because the, the reality is most most new ideas don't work. I mean, just statistically. And so if we're going to go into something like that, more speculative that hasn't been tried, um, yeah, you're going to want the funds to be able to fall back on. It's easy. Um, I say if you're, and I, I don't mean to be, uh, it's not a pejorative comment at all. It's easy to look at a small like venture of a, a burger place, right? To see it as, well, you know, it's not going to make any money. You're missing, you're missing the point. You have an independent business that is incorporating a very, very specialized crypto uh, from a ecosystem that is essentially driven by a community, right? And they're going to spread that word out to other people. And that's just one company, one small company in a regional area, like I think in Naples, and they got another allocation somewhere else. But just think of all these other people that are going to get involved in Evergrow or still are, and they're going to use their, um, cause once one person does it and they inform the community, how they're going to do it, then other people are going to adopt that. They're going to be like, let's say they do the, uh, the now payments that he, uh, that, uh, Evergrow bus was saying, uh, now payments, uh, IO, if it's going to work for him, you, you know, he's going to say something and then other people are going to probably do that too. And, then, I mean, just think of it like in terms of Bitcoin, right? The first company to adopt Bitcoin, they started in 2008. And it was, I believe, Microsoft who was the first company that actually adopted Bitcoin as a, as a form of payment. I don't, I don't remember seeing that. So that took a long time, right? And they were the first. So you have to not think of it like, okay, well, why is, when's Walmart going to do it? Um, it's you have to sort of prove yourself as a as a functioning business model that's making profit, and you're also got this massive community that gets businesses drooling at the mouth, because community is is like you have reach right. You have a whole customer base at your disposal right there. You know, obviously we're doing it for different reasons, but they see an opportunity. So, um, go ahead, my savior. Go ahead, I see you. Okay, yeah, I can I understand what you're saying, and it's very, very good. But um, I want to ask a question here, please. Um, I think the question goes to Eva, um, Steve, and Cody, and the team. The question I want to ask is that um, because uh, if if somebody now um, organizes a seminar. You know that some places organizes a seminar on maybe on generally on um, IT information tech and uh, we happen to need because that's one of the way that um, I've been promoting some of the company and we happen to need maybe Evagro one person from Evagro to give a blockchain a speaker to that to give a talk on the seminar virtually. Will you guys do it because it's necessary? What I'm saying like that is that I've been organizing a lot of tech this thing meetings which if that's another platform that we can also have a value you know as ecosystem but the person represents a company because all these things are one of the very strong adverts even in there are some conferences that we organize it at a very large conference so 
is it will it be possible are you talking about like maybe like you know like coming up shortly or you know in six months or a year or two years what yeah, you say anything is possible like, any, yeah. that's that's part of the problem i think there are so many opportunities so many things we could do um and, and actually stan made a tweet about this not long ago um gosh i can't even paraphrase it but uh look through sam's tweets he made a tweet uh, uh about saying no right so Absolutely. i remember that yeah, so there, there's a lot of power in saying no to a great idea that you just do not have the resources, the bandwidth to take on, right? If you're able to focus on a, a couple of things that you know you can do and do well, have success with those, then you move on to something else. The, I think the, the shotgun approach to try and do everything at once is just it's a way to fail really quickly which you know can be good in some cases but uh i think once you have revenue and profits that's the key thing if we had a surplus of revenue and profits anything's on the table why not because the risk isn't there right right now we have the funds we have we want to protect them for the community and use them wisely to uh grow as much as we can in this market and the markets to come. There's so much uncertainty within crypto right now that, um, you know, again, we're still early, right? So it's um, the projects that can survive now and, and actually build and grow. Those are the ones that are going to prevail in the future because, again, we're early, right? And the example you use, like the, the kind of shotgun approach, works really well for lawyers because you can just sue anybody you want and whoever, whatever it sticks to, you're going to basically do good, right? doesn't work so well in business because you're stretching yourself so thin that you're focusing everywhere, but not on one thing. So it, it sounds absolutely right that, you know, you got to say no sometimes and to say, hey, it sounds like a really great idea, but I mean, man, you're taking on an enormous amount of risk at a very, very high price with no guarantee that you'll even succeed. So let's bite off the things that we know we can do and know we can do well and build on that. That's the whole point of why we're doing what we're doing right now. I shouldn't say I am not doing it. The you know, team's doing it. Violet, how you doing? Thanks for joining in. Um, one more, I save here, and then I'm going to move on because uh, I don't want the space to be like three hours because people people have complained that spaces are too long. So go ahead with your question. Okay, maybe you guys did not really get um, what I was saying. What I'm saying is that um this because i've been uh, what i was saying is that i have a tech maybe conference and in that tech conference one of the talk show in that conference is to talk about blockchain so if i like maybe i squeeze in and now i have a person from a group you talk about blockchain and use that opportunity to also introduce the ecosystem like a group that goes a long way to people. It's not as if I'm saying that you, the team should bring money and come and do all those. That is a very, I was just asking whether the team, because mm-hmm. I don't, I've been through the, whether the team can do that is, is a good thing. It's one of the ways of promoting the team virtually in another conference that is not a critical, but because of the topic of blockchain, you bring one person from the team, virtually the person gives a talk and also gives, that is what Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and you know, Sam is great about that kind of thing. Sam does join a lot of different spaces where they talk about a vast array of subjects and topics. And when um, he has the opportunity, he he gets to discuss things involved in blockchain and Web3 and even sometimes also discuss Evergrove. So, yeah, and I think that's a great point too, Savior. I mean, obviously, being able to go out there and represent the company at these, let's say, tech talks, we'll call them that, <laughs> anytime they're they're everywhere, right? Especially with Twitter spaces nowadays. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to, to do. Keep in mind too that um, you, if you're going to speak on these uh, generally, if you're going to talk about, you know, blockchain and your business and, you know, your model and all that stuff, at some point, somebody's going to ask you, well, what have you done? What have you produced? That, that, that's really, that's yep. a very important point, right? And so when we have utilities that are running and generating profit, it, uh, it opens a lot of doors because at that point, you know, I would call that success, right? And so when you have success, people want to hear about it. 
And so, yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. Uh, it's a great idea. I think that uh, Sam does a little bit of that already, but once we do have utilities running, I'm sure he's going to be doing a whole lot more of that. And keep yeah, in exactly. mind, he's been, Sam has been very clear that he wants to do crypto like traditional business in the sense of transparency. So at some point, he's going to um, essentially show the books, right? Here is this utility, or maybe as a company as a whole, right? Because sometimes, you know, I want to break it down too much. But as a company, with these utilities, in the last six months, we have shown X number of growth. Or maybe he's going to do it quarterly, doing it yearly. I don't know how he's going to do it exactly. But knowing Sam, he's going to want to demonstrate and prove that we have a system that's working. And I have no doubt in my mind that let's say if you know one of them isn't working as well as it is, sometimes you have to look at it and say, nah, maybe this is not the, really the one we should be focusing our attention on. Maybe we need to focus on this, right? And um, so once you do that and you show that you're making money and show that you're doing exactly what you said you're going to do, you're going to do buyback and burn of Evergrowth. That is the whole point of all utilities, provide profit that feeds the system in the sense of paying for the expenses of the company, buy back and burn, and then we keep moving, moving forward, moving forward constantly. Once you do that and prove it, then I, I have, I've said this before many times. I have no doubt in my mind that Sam will be invited to some very high profile events where he gets to speak about why his company is different compared to all other DeFi projects. I'll, Absolutely. I'll, 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 put my, I'll put my name on that because I know it's going to happen. I believe it. So, but right now we're doing the hard part. That's the building. And uh, so you just got to be patient, but it's a really good comment. Really, really good comment. Um, Rocket, did you want to add to that or Cody? Marius? No, uh, the, the thing I wanted to say, like Sam owns an investment firm. So he, he knows well where to put his money, you know? <laughs> so that given that, you know, he he knows kind of knows where a company needs to head so you can trust it and invest on it and see the vision and you know make a profitable investment that's it like um, he, he we are so lucky to have him because he knows so much about that so we uh, this is the you know the goal like take this project to like um uh a steady state, like a solid one, so people can trust their, you know, investments um, in 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 this project. I mean, and keep and keep in mind simple too that, stuff. Yeah, exactly. And keep in mind too that that I, I have a feeling in traditional finance, what you do is you you go you pick the winners, and hopefully you can do that consistently. Make money for your for your um, your investor, right? Because he's that's what he, that was his job is to make money for his investors. And steer people clear of uh, unreasonable risk, so that they can they can secure those profits. Right? Sam has made it very clear that he is down on EGC. I think he said twenty seven million dollars. Being a responsible businessman that is spent his whole you know has been, you know good part of his life on investments and making money and all that stuff, you know sticking with it, he knows what the potential is. Why, you know, most people would just walk away, right? Okay, I'm down this much. I'm not going any further. You know, Paul is probably down, I think, $3 million. But people keep sticking with it because they know what the potential is. You know, I complain because I'm down a few grand, right? You know, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember what it was now, you know. But, you know, there's a lot of people with big money in Evergrow right now. And they're sticking with it because they see the potential. And they see where this thing could go. Um, so, yeah, I mean... $27 million is nothing to, you know, that's a lot of money. And for him to stick with it and saying, like, you know, I'm down too. I'm with you guys. I think that says a lot. Just me. But We'll go ahead and um, I'm just going to push forward here because we did talk a little bit about Atlas. Um, in case you guys aren't aware, who are not on the beta test team, we're version 15 right now. Um, I've been keeping an eye on um, Discord and uh, what's going on in there. <clears throat> a lot of interesting tweets on the subject. And um, so we did talk a little bit about the features of Atlas Wallet a little bit earlier. And one of the, what we talked about was the whale watch feature, right? But I didn't know that Sam had said the one thing I did mention earlier was watch wallets have features, including push notifications. So you can see in real time when a whale trades or a family member or your friend, you're keeping an eye on. So I think that's a really, really useful feature. 
So if you want to keep an eye on a whale or something and send, maybe say, okay, you know, what's going on here? Are they accumulating? Are they selling? Um, you know, basically, you know, it's just keeping an eye on your investment, right? Or your potential investment. I think uh, you don't necessarily have to be married to one project. You can, you can be involved in many. It's a really cool feature, um, especially, I'll say, last bull market. That's one of the things I was doing. So you'd watch, for example, a, a big whale makes a large sale in Project XYZ. It's like, all right, well, what are they buying? Uh, and, I mean, it was a good strategy during a bull market. I wouldn't necessarily try it now, but, uh, yeah, so it's a neat feature. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I didn't even know that was, I mean, of course, I keep an eye on some wallets, right? But but um, it's usually one of those things where I'm manually looking at it and looking for some a visual indicator that something's changed, right? So yeah, folks do a lot of copy trading. And so there, there's a lot of big traders out there and you can just watch their wallets. And if they're selling X, Y, Z, buying something else and, you know, it, it's something to consider. It's really interesting. The, um, I'm curious what you guys, I think just as kind of speculating how, you know, being that everything that's going on with BlackRock and, you know, kind of the market, it seems we're kind of like in this kind of, I thought we were, we were getting out of that, you know, the, 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 the scare tactics of the SEC and all that stuff. I feel like, I don't know what's just me, but there are, people are just kind of getting tired of it. They don't really have any more credibility anymore. And so people are starting to put money back into the market. Uh, what's your, you know, not financial advice, but what you kind of feel like, you know, you feel like we're kind of pulling out of a bear market. Are we kind of in that gray zone where it could go back down? What do you think? Who, me? Yeah. Why not? Um, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I think that we are, again, who knows, right? Everything mm -hmm. I say could be wrong, and it probably is. Um, <laughs> I, I think that the the worst of the bear market is likely behind us. If it's not, it's definitely not far. Uh, I, I think we're kind of in a kind of a sideways shuffle for a bit mm -hmm. before the bull market starts. Right. We got the Bitcoin halving soon. I mean, just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think we're probably going sideways. Who knows? Could be moon tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Cody? Um, that's kind of what I was going to say as far as sideways goes. I think it's sideways. It's hard to say. I mean, technically, what was it? Uh, um, Thursday? Was it Thursday that the – I have to go back and look. That the S&P 500 rallied um, – 20% surge, I think it was. I have to double check those numbers. Don't hold me to it. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, it's starting. Here we go. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But, so, right. I mean, you know, you see a little bit more signs of stuff like that. It's always a good thing. Uh, or usually is a good thing. But I think people are definitely tired of it. Who's not tired of all of this? I mean, I think currently it's going to be sideways for a bit longer. This is my prediction without getting too deep into the rabbit hole of it. Um, Will there be like a massive fallback or recession of it? I, I don't think so, but I don't think it's going to just mm -hmm. get better in the next three months. No, I think we're going to see us. I think we're going to be kind of stagnant for a bit. And then hopefully okay. we start to see some uptrends. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think the bull market isn't going to come when folks are, you know, panicking and watching everything. No. I think it comes to boredom, right? So I think everything's going to be really boring. Stuff's not really going anywhere. Uh, and that's when it, you know, we start to see the start of a bull market. Everybody thinks it's another fake out, like the last 25 fake outs we've seen. But the fake out never comes back down. And, you know, by the time you realize you're in a bull market, you're halfway into it. It's a, it's a bear market until it's not. Yeah, basically. There you go. <laughs> uh, CWP, I know you, were, you look like you wanted to chime in. Yeah, I do want to chime in on this. Um, I, I, one of the things that I do, I look for indicators in the market. And one of the ones that I watch that has been, for me, at least a really good one, is CoinGecko's 24-hour market um, sales. And um, watching the, the dollar volume there. I Yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, it went up to a number that I haven't seen for over a year. Um it goes back down, then it jumps back. It's bouncing around, and so I think we're teeter-tottering on the edge of a big bull market. Uh, just my opinion. But 
The problem is in the United States, period. Um, and that's the SEC. There's so much fear and uncertainty in this country. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, and from what I read, it's just in this country. Um, example of what I'm talking about, uh, quickly, um, Africa's cryptocurrency adoption soared by 1,200% from July 2020 to June 2021. Um, it's a reshaping Africa's traditional financial systems. Uh, countries like Kenya, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and Tanzania are leading the crypto boom in Africa, yet their cryptocurrency uh, uh, as a percentage is only about 2% of the global market. Imagine if we had a 1,200% jump in one year in crypto uh, adoption in this country. And until we get rid of Gensler and all of this foolish stupidity, I don't think that's going to happen. But translate that into what would happen to EGC with a 1,200% uh, jump. Um, so it would be be amazing. So in terms of the um, total of percentage, let's say holders, so you want to call them like DeFi, how many, what percentage of DeFi is in the United States? Could you answer that, do you think? I don't have an answer for it. Maybe Cody or Rocket does. Because here, here's my, my thought, right? If everybody is also on board with crypto, and you know we're the uh, we're the ones that are kind of really dragging our feet, you know, when I talk about the SEC and all that stuff, where do we get left behind? And they're like, yeah, we don't care. And then it doesn't really matter what we think. BNB is going to go up. Bitcoin's going to go up. Um, obviously, the perception within the borders of the United States is having a global effect on crypto, right? Um, so, if but if we were let's say negative on we were bearish on crypto and everybody else is bullish on crypto, it wouldn't matter what we thought because the price would still be going up. So that kind of like, I want to kind of make sense of this in my mind. And what do you think it's going to take to switch that perception? Is firing Ginsler the, the, the straw that basically makes crypto go bullish? Um, I don't think so. I think regulatory clarity is going to be absolutely necessary. Um, I don't know what that looks like. I mean, we've talked a little bit about the European model and stuff like that. Um, I think I think they're doing a much better job than than we are in terms of the United States, for at least some sort of clarity. What do you think on that? I agree with you about Gensler. He is um, he's a symptom of a much deeper problem in, in this country, a political issue, um, and we need to get that resolved. Um, you're absolutely correct that we are dragging the market down this country by ourselves because we are such a big market. Um, and because we still have a very large soapbox to preach from. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and, and we desperately need to get the politicians on both sides of the aisle on board with crypto. Because one of the fears that I read into all of this is that Americans are expecting the U.S. government to outlaw the ownership of crypto across the board. Can they do that? Yes. What about DeFi and wallets? Well, that will be something when you get caught with a wallet and your phone, um, you go to prison. That yeah, I don't is, see that happening. You know, I, there are a lot of people who do see that happening, or or an attempt at least to make it happen. Yeah, um, I as can't, China can't. has done, as you know, as Russia did for a while until they realized what they could do with accepting crypto um yeah and until they realize how much money they have in crypto. exactly, exactly yeah. <laughs> and the people <laughs> the um you know it's interesting we, when we were talking about the water earlier i just um the one thing that was going to cover i don't mean to change the subject but i wanted to make sure i covered this because you know we're kind of going in a little bit but um somebody had asked it was actually alan had asked about you know profits and stuff like that right and so Alan had, his name is, uh, it's at Skeeters or 989. Is it possible to predict what percentage of revenue volume generated by Luna Sky NFT and Atlas Wallet will go to buy back and burn? So this was what we were talking about earlier. Um, and Sam had responded that not in advance, we have set costs, variable costs. Set costs don't depend on the volume and user numbers. 
but variable costs do. Uh, we will be targeting products or projects, which means higher volume, with some potential for fee incentives. But again, we uh, until we are live, we won't know the real demographics of our users. Are they individuals, which require higher relative costs of customer service, et cetera, or projects, which will likely have better profit margins for us? We should begin to get a clearer picture within the first couple quarters of launch. So that kind of right there, we were talking about it earlier. That's the plan going forward to basically, okay, how do we use our utilities? Who is going to, who's our potential other than the general user, right? There's going to be potential for, let's say, Luna Sky to be used by other projects. So keep that in mind. It's not just a, the average NFT user that's going to be generating revenue for us. I had a comment on the wallet earlier. I tweeted out, I want the Atlas wallet now. Um, <laughs> the, um, actually, I said the tweet was yesterday. I want it. Right. Um, and the reason for that is this week, um, and this is pretty basic, and it's very basic to wanting the, the Atlas wallet. Um, I wanted to buy some EGC and some Lucro. And this week, somehow, I lost a day and thought that uh, I still had a weekday in order to, to call my bank and send them an email to turn off the fraud detection so that I could buy some crypto um, with my debit bank debit card. And I, I looked at, uh, at Mercurio and their, their uh, base is in London. So I thought when I realized that I had lost the opportunity to get my bank to do that, and what a pain in the butt that is to even have to do that. Um, I thought, well, maybe it'll go through because it's it's London. It's not you know uh, some Eastern European place right. that that uh, triggers fear and dread. Yeah. Did it work? Um, no, it didn't. That was denied, and immediately I got a call, an automated call from the fraud detection has noticed some, um, you know, suspicious action. activity. Yes, suspe that's the word. Yes, I'm, because I'm a, such a suspicious person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just irritates me beyond words. Um, there is no, you know, and, and for some reason, uh, um, no, MoonPay is not available anymore. Um, I'm sure that probably has something to do with the SEC too. Um, but I believe that Atlas Wallet is going to make all of that moot. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, uh, I know the, the the deals that are working with payment providers right now, especially in the U.S. market. I mean, if it's available then it should work, right? But there is the caveat that Paul had said that um, just because you're, it, it says it's in the Atlas wallet, it doesn't necessarily mean your bank won't turn it down. So I'm hoping that that will resolve that issue, hopefully. You know, one thing, um, I don't know, was it, who said this last week? They had said that they used Chime. They, uh, they, and I don't know if that's like kind of one of those online banks, but apparently in the U.S., you can use Chime as a um, payment provider and it doesn't get declined. So does anybody have any experience with Chime and if that's the case or not? Anybody? You can put up your hand or give me a thumbs up if you've used Chime. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to put uh, on the go crypto. I'm going to give me your speaker. Just give me one second. On the go crypto, how you doing? I'm doing good. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, thanks for being here today. Hey, yeah, thanks for having the space. Uh, the I, I've been listening along, and I just happen to uh, be a Chime user every day, and I've never had a single problem with Chime. With any crypto platform, any onboarding, you know, uh, Transact, MoonPay, Simplex, I mean, literally all of them. I've even done some direct buy, uh, you know, on PulseX and stuff. And I never have a hmm. I never have a problem with Chime ever. It's fantastic. Can you can you tell me what how Chime works exactly? I'm not really, I've heard of it, but I don't know how. It works. <clears throat> so it's 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 marketed as an online bank, but really Chime mm -hmm. is not a bank at all. Chime is a, a financial tech company. 
and they use okay. by proxy banking services through contracts with Southern Bank Corp, which I really okay. don't even know who the hell they are, but that allows Chime to pimp themselves in marketing campaigns as a uh, bank. And uh, it works, though, because so, it's, it's perfect. So when you use your card, right, as a payment uh -huh. to buy, let's say, through TrustWall or whatever it may be, um, do you have to load funds onto that, or does it link to your bank account? <clears throat> so you have a bank account with a routing number and everything. And so if you had, like, a, uh, a jobs payroll contribution uh, okay. um, direct deposited there, it would be exactly the same as if you had that with Bank of America. Um, except something that Chime is able to do through Bank Corp uh, is, or Southern Bank Corp is you get your check earlier for whatever reason. I don't know how that works and how that's possible, but um, if you get, uh, I'd say you're supposed to get paid Friday, you get paid Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. Right. And um, so that that's it makes it sexy and everybody likes that. But it's really neat that you... You can send money instantly from one Chime user to another instantly for free, hmm. nationwide, worldwide. It happens instantly. It's pretty neat. What's the processing time when you, uh, let's say, if you're using your trust wallet or whatever? How long does it take to, you know, to for the transaction to go through? Let's say if you're using Moonpay or whatever. <clears throat> if for the funds to actually register and come out, you instantly get a notification from Chime that says that you. Wow. Oh yeah, instantly it says you've, you know. You simplex so and so um, transaction for this amount of money, or MoonPay, or Transact. Um, the actual transaction speed, you know, is 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 very fast. It's pretty it's pretty neat. I'm not sure how how they're able to do it, but especially when it comes to sending money to other users, because it's remarkable. I've had a guy where we were uh, trying to get in on. A, um, we were in a we were whitelisted on a presale, but we wanted a bigger allocation, so we were obviously trying to jump in right at the gun. And he didn't realize that he uh, didn't have the minimum. I think at the time for Simplex was fifty dollars or something like that. You know, last right, last bull right. run, and uh, he didn't have it. And I sent it to him, and he had it loaded in his account, ready to go, literally within like twenty seconds. It's uh, wow. yeah, it's amazing. I I hope it lasts forever. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you coming up and saying that because um, I've never I've, I've heard somebody say about Chime, but uh, I might just have to look into that. My bank is pretty crypto friendly right now, but you never know that might change. Yeah, and I like that it's uh, I have a you question. Know, it's a bank, but it's it's online, and you know I like it whenever things aren't uh, brick and mortar. Right. Anyway, thanks, Thank guys. you for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a question about uh, sending funds to Chime. Um, if you don't use direct deposit. How can you fund your Chime account? So you, they have an agreement. Um, the one of the there's two guys that co-created it, and I don't recall the names, but one of them was a um, a Green Dot um, founder, some some sort of network of ATMs and such early on, and the other was a big guy with Mastercard, and they came to an agreement with CVSs and Walgreens nationwide. And if you're in the U.S., you can go to any Walgreens or CVS and just simply add cash to your checking account. Or you can go to any CVS or Walgreens, and the ATMs that are inside those are part of the one of the co-creators' network. So you can get money out for free nationwide as well. Oh, man. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Uh, double thanks coming from me because you just solved my whining complaining crying issue <laughs> yeah that's awesome i appreciate it so much no problem well it's it's more or less like we have in eu revolut like if right now i want to charge it let's say that account i just you know use my credit card and and it shows like i'm i paid something you know like i i paid like I don't know, like a hundred bucks um, on this store, but it actually takes the money and puts it in my account, like in Revolut, and then I can use it whatever. I don't have issues with my bank or whatever, but I'm doing it that way, you know, as an extra step. Interesting. Interesting. And it's instant. Everything is instant. And I mean, they they have crypto, you know, on the app. To, to buy so you can use whatever exchange you want or service or whatever there's nothing blocking you 
Interesting. I just went to the Chime website, and yeah, it looks like... Uh, Me too. Yeah, I'm just looking at it right now. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it looks interesting. I'm going to check it out. Thank you for that again. And for all of you guys with bad credit, like I used to have, I noticed that they help you build credit, too. Oh, really? That's interesting. Chime does? Um, yes. Um, how I how does that? I haven't, seen how did... the, I haven't seen how that's done, but I would guess that you put money into a secured account there. Um, and, um, and as you pay all of your bills or whatever they report to the agency, that's what uh, uh, Self does and some of these others that cost you a little bit of money. Um, Interesting. Uh, and I and I had no credit, I mean zero credit, which is worse than bad credit. Um, I, I at two of the uh, at the two of the reporting things, I had zero notice. I was dead as far as they knew. And the other one, my credit was at six twenty, I think. Mm -hmm. And I joined self in one other program uh, to deposit funds and build it up in my. My credit in a little over a year is at 760. Oh, wow. Awesome. So it was been real worth it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I really appreciate that. That's uh, good advice. If anybody else has some other, you know, uh, kind of like Chime products that they know that are crypto friendly and you want to share it, um, even put it in the, uh, the, you know, in the, in the space chat if you want to. And um, yeah, just that is great because, um, yeah, it's, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I, I found that I use some payment providers and some uh, won't work at all. And now I just kind of go, um, you know, with USA, they're, I find they're good. But I've heard Wells Fargo is not friendly. And, or wait, is it Wells Fargo? And then one of them is. And, you know, the like buddy I, of mine that has, he tries to buy crypto and, you know, he has to constantly call on them and all that stuff. It's a, kind of a really hassle. So if, um, yeah, if Chime is the way around it, that sounds like a good idea to me. So um, does anybody have any questions for, go ahead, go ahead, CP. I, I don't have a question, but I would like, when it's appropriate, I would like to change uh, the conversation to a news item that I found striking. Sure, go for it. Um, uh, I shared this with Rocket um, only, and I'm about to tweet out information about it. Um, but there's a new GPT um, that's out that is um, stunning. Uh, to say the least, um, it's called uh, Insights GPT, and it's a completely new AI model from uh, either Babel or Babel Street, however you pronounce that. Uh, it is, uh, I think, originally designed um, for law enforcement um, because um, uh, because it scrapes the the as well as the web. Uh, the dark web, but it also has a lot of information in it from uh, from government sources, from public sources, and other things that Google doesn't have. Um, it, uh, its base is 500 petabytes of data, um, wow. and so it exceeds the Google search capacity uh, by almost three times already. Um, wow. It's been designed to ferret out info on threat intelligence and identity verification and also risk management for businesses. Um, it's so you can search in and use a, a language for your any of 200 different languages to search in and you can search for specific things within a language and you can get answers back from it in a different language than you request. So it's it's very uh, interesting language and location specific searches. Um, you can ask it questions and it responds by adding suggested questions that you might ask it that you didn't even know to ask. Very um, interesting. It will give previously unseen patterns, relationships, or opportunities. Um, and it gives its response in natural language and responds in the same natural uh, speaking inputs. Um, Pre precision intelligence returns direct responses rather than results for naturally formed questions making the tool user friendly and efficient um, what's it called again CWP it's called um, uh, well I and I'm just right now tweeting it 
Um, oh, it's called um, Insights GPT. My tweet has a Business Wire article in it and a YouTube uh, thing. It is amazing. I'm. Um, it's going to. Uh, one of the other uses for it is politics, because you're going to be able to analyze data and see voter um, and be able to pre predict how you individually are going to vote in an election. Um, wow. The same thing for marketing. Uh, what are you going to buy? What kind of products? So you can be directly marketed to on the basis of their insights. Um, it's also the only thing about it that I fear, but this is the way we're going anyway, is that it's going to be used for profiling. So this person is most likely to commit a bank robbery. Um, and we already know how good face recognition is. Um, but but the, uh, the the possibilities of this are just mm -hmm. stunning. And so if you're mistaken, uh, the uh, chat GPT didn't actually scour the Internet. It was kind of all responses were being generated from a kind of essentially an internal, an internal, uh, internally stored um, information, right? It wasn't actually actively seeking out on the web, which this does. And this actually does. Yeah, this has scraped the dark web and the, the regular web. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, 500 petabytes is a lot of data. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and lot. it's uh, come, being released uh, as a public release that's going to be limited this summer. Um, and it's going to blow chat GTP out of the water, four and five, because no. they are so limited. Um I, well, no, I don't know that five is limited since it's not out yet, but uh, and I've not used four because I didn't want to pay the uh, the extreme amount of money, in my opinion, for it. Um, but uh, the three point five sure is limited. Um, I find tons of errors in it. I don't know. It, it will apologize and correct itself when I point out an error. Um, and I actually, I shared this with Cody and Rocket. I actually broke it the other day. I had it going around in circles. Um, so it's yeah. Uh, so I found it very limited. Uh, Chat GTP can be very creative in its responses, um, and it can mm -hmm. also be so generic that anybody with a functioning brain would have come up with the same answer. Um, but this is a whole level beyond. Um, I mean, imagine learning about a question that you didn't even know enough to ask. You know, what What I find really uh, amazing is that ChatGPT was only released late last year. So you look how fast the evolution of this artificial intelligence has come in, what, seven, eight months or something? Yeah. ChatGPT is obsolete already. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate it. So uh, while we're here, um, does anybody have any questions for Cody or Rocco while we have him? Paul was dropped in, but he um, said that he was having some issues, uh, unable to connect to the microphone. So uh, he probably won't be joining. But um, maybe if you guys have a question, just please raise your hand. I'll go ahead and bring you up. Um, one the question I did have, and I never got a chance to ask Sam about it last time, and Cody or, or Rocket, uh, would you put a, go into detail about the the whole shield thing now that it's not there anymore? That was on the Twitter, on our Twitter, official Twitters? Oh, the shield thing. Yes, yeah. yes. I remember this week before last when I was here, when you yeah. brought that up. Um, I'm, again, going to say the same thing. Just going to leave that one for Sam. All right. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I remembered to ask him last time he was on. <laughs> the reason I say that is because I really don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll let Sam say, uh, I don't think there's much to it, but you never know. Maybe he's yeah. got something else that we don't even know about. So maybe we'll catch him one day and get him to spill the beans. One uh, question somebody did ask uh, about, and Sam's not here to answer, or Paul, um, but just going to put it out there. Some people have said, like, with the Luna Sky being its own, its own thing, kind of like Atlas Wallet. It's its own thing, that it's a utility that is made by Evergrow, but it's because of because of the, the nature of crypto, you know, with with um, 
I always forget this, uh, I forget the term, um, basically tribalism. Uh, when will that EGC come off of um, the, the official Twitters? And um, Paul was going to address that today. And so but leave it at that if nobody has an answer. Say that one more time for me. I, I, I didn't catch the last bit of what you said. One sure. more time for me. So you know how Luna Sky has the Evergo um, kind of logo next to the Verified, right? The, the ticker, yeah, I got you. Yeah, the ticker, yeah. When is that going to drop off? Because once we go live, right, um, is it necessarily going to stay? You know, with because if you look at Atlas Wallet Official on Twitter, you know, we want this to be a separate entity, right? We don't want the association with Evergo on Atlas Wallet yeah. directly. Yeah, and then and so will Luna Sky do the same thing, or or will it always be kind of uh, will it be left there? Do you think? That's a great question. We haven't actually um, we haven't discussed it yet. Okay. I know that it'll be something we do discuss because, like you said, with Atlas. But yeah, we haven't actually gone over it yet. Interesting. Yeah. Not super concerned about it, to be honest with you. Granted, yes, they're all designed to be standalone utilities, right? They are all underneath the Evergrow ecosystem in a sense because the revenues generated come back to the company, you know, yeah. and help with supporting that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we'll move the ticker from Luna Sky up. If I had to take a guess, I would say we probably will. Yeah. Not to switch a topic, but I'm just uh, just going through Discord real quick. I was going to check it out. Have you guys seen the buys? There was like a twenty eight hundred dollar buy, then an eleven, almost twelve thousand dollar buy of EGC. Oh, wow. wow! Dang, yeah. money. Very cool. Yeah, I'm going to check the Twitter Spaces chat real quick. See if anybody's got any questions. I see that one. Yeah, it was forty seven point eight five BNB per uh, spent. Eleven, almost twelve grand. Wow. About 275 billion. Wow. Yeah. So that particular it, buyer's position went up 147%. Dang. So, yeah, that's massive. Yeah. Oh, and cool. the, yeah, I'm happy about it. Shy William Blake just said in there, Evergrow Steve, the true chime doesn't stop crypto. Use it 100%. Also, no minimum account balance fees or monthly fees for the accounts. Can also um, picture deposits in your. Accounts by a check. Oh, I mean, like take a picture of a check and wire transfer. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Looks so. like that other buy, Steve, is from a brand new holder. That's really cool. I mean, at least the wallet is new. But so, is it a, actually a new person or a secondary or third wallet for yeah. someone? I don't. I don't know. But that's pretty neat. Yeah, let me. Yeah, I'm gonna go have a look here and see. I love those stats from the buy bot here. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. It's like like this one. I'm looking at buyer position new. Uh, that was almost a three thousand dollar buy right there. Sixty six, mm-hmm. almost sixty seven. Well, sixty six billion. Yeah, wow. that, was a, that was a nice little green candle right there. Yeah, there you cool. go. I nice. like watching the uh, the sales twenty four hour sales on Coin Gecko uh, too. Um, and right now, it's probably not reflecting those yet, um, or maybe it is. But the trading volume was twenty five thousand three hundred and twenty seven dollars. In 24 hours, and uh, EGC just popped 3.7 percent on CoinGecko. Yeah, yeah. Lucro is up too, uh, percentage-wise. They're both doing really well. Um, yeah, Lucro's yeah 4.8. Yeah, um, good stuff. With a, Paul just uh, joined in. We can maybe ask him, yeah. uh, maybe thank him for for buying almost 13 grand worth of Evergrow. Appreciate it, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you, Paul. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It's still waiting on my thirteen grand to come through on uh, my Chime account, so it should be pretty instant. <laughs> I think actually everyone would be if it actually was me, everyone would be disappointed because you know then it wouldn't be a new buyer or someone else. That's interested. true. You know, so it's actually good. Yeah. How you doing, Paul? Thanks for joining today. Doing good. I've been trying to join for like the last hour. I keep getting kicked out. I don't know what was wrong. It's finally working. I'm still getting a little staticky. So let me know if I'm I'm breaking up at all. But it's... you sound pretty clear to me. So it, thanks. Good. It's been a little yeah. weird. For me. Sorry about that. Yeah. So what's on your mind? Um, anything new to talk about? We kind of just, we were kicking around Atlas for a little bit, Luna Sky. Um, we did have that question come in from the community uh, about the next to the verified uh, for Luna Sky and Atlas. If that ever go a little, uh, will go away at some point for both of those. Yeah. So as you all know, um, having just a yellow verified, by itself 
is a thousand dollars a month. Wow. Okay. And so each one is a thousand dollars a month. And then the affiliates you have, um, if it's a business, you know, it can be yellow, but we'll have, you know, the Evergrow next to it. So right now we just have the Evergrow, which is a thousand dollars a month. We didn't want to turn Luna Sky and Atlas into their own yellow, yellow verified ones by themselves until they were just about ready. Um, so we are going to turn them individually, you know, so they don't have the Evergrow affiliate net next to them. But we didn't want to do it too early because then we'd just be kind of wasting money there. Now, I know yeah. someone said it's just a thousand dollars a month. Well, that adds up over a little bit. And as you know, we're still in a bear market and everything. And, you know, Sam is very financially uh, responsible with your guys' money. So you just don't, you don't want to throw it away, you know, really for nothing. So, you know, we're approaching, you know, maybe a week before because it only takes about three days um, to get verified um, when you have an organization. So that's pretty quick. Yeah. So, um, we will be doing that like literally right before, uh, we go live. So it's, so it's individual by, by itself. Gotcha. Thanks for answering the question. There was one more that I saw from Matt Healy. I don't know if you can, cause it's directed towards Sam, but, uh, question Sam tweeted about the running costs of the utilities. Will fees collected from products go towards paying all the running costs first for each month? Then after will profits go to buy back and burn? Or will the fees be split to es uh, to estimate what is needed for the expenses and buy back and burn each day? I don't know if you can answer that or not. The the expenses, so like let's say you know whatever the expenses of Atlas Wallet is, mm -hmm. you know, so revenue comes in first. Let's say let's just take uh, let's take a round number. Let's just take twenty grand. Um, if the wallet makes twenty grand in revenue uh, when it comes in, then you take out you know, what it costs to run the wallet, you know, maybe nodes, um, um, you know, maybe some marketing, you know, all the top fees, you know, staff that's on the wallet. And then after that is the profits. Um, we haven't figured out the breakdown on the profits. Whoa. Yeah, I heard that too. You hear that too? I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what the breakdown is going to be of the profits. It will definitely go back to the holders. I just don't know in what way, like, you know, what percentage to go to buy back and burn. Some might go to direct rewards, um, you know, staking. I don't know that part yet. Um, but the, the, so the revenue and then taken out, you know, the, of what it costs for that new utility and then it'll be spread out or maybe gotcha. just one. We haven't figured that out yet. Gotcha. Not figured out yet. We haven't announced it yet. Let's put it gotcha. that way. Well, thank you for answering that. Uh huh. Yeah. It'd be the, the same uh... way. It was the same way with Luna Sky also. You know, uh, same same thing. Same one. Gotcha. Um, well, I'm sure a lot of people are pretty curious about the. Um, I haven't said too much about Atlas in terms of the beta testing. All I said really is that we're on version 15 right now. Um, did you want to maybe elaborate on to you know how things are going? Yeah, so things are going good. Um, we actually just added five more testers um, to the group. So you know, which meaning we're you know ramping up the testing um all the major stuff is really done now we're i mean a lot of like let's say we had like you know 50 little tiny things now we're focused on the major stuff um you know testing out all the partners and i'm trying to get more people in from other countries to test out all the buy partners um making sure you know you can buy with your your cards you know because even though some of these partners say like in a certain country you can buy your bank might not take it. And right. that's what we're going to just have to deal with because it's a third party that we can do, but we're still trying to spread it out, making sure, you know, the fees are correct, you know, with, you know, simplex and other wallets or transact and other wallets. Um, I got Evergrow and Lucro in with a couple of partners too for direct buys. So we're testing them out very in depth and the swaps are very in depth. So those are the, important things because we don't want to release it and you know if there's a little bug or two that that's not a big deal but if we release it and the swaps are wrong you know let's say you try to swap a token and you know you get way less money or way less tokens for you know what you paid we don't want that that would be you know really bad than someone was a re refund so we want to make sure all that's very important all those kinks are ironed out um so that's why we're upgrading the testers and you know maybe next week or two um, I'll add maybe 10, 15 more from more different parts of the countries, keep ramping up from there. And also waiting on just one more thing, um, 
to be added. So while we're waiting for the one thing to be added, um, we're just focused on the other things right now. But it's going extremely well. Awesome. So Cody and Rocket had expressed, you know, a little bit of issue with Wallet Connect. Is that something that we're dealing uh, with as well for Atlas Wallet or the issue with Wallet yeah. Connect? Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. So it's just, it's just, you know, they all took out V1 and, you know, you got to institute V2, but there's going to be bugs and problems with it when you try and connect. But that's nothing that we did. Right. Just like Cody probably already told you, you know, yeah. what we can do about it. Exactly. So, yeah. One of the uh, one of the other things that you had talked about in the past was a potential solution for, and I won't go into detail, but the um, where where people were buying a, a particular token and they were being charged twice. And you said you're work, kind of working on that. How's how's that going? And where you know where we're we're going to be able to compete? It's going it's going good. We think we found the solution. We're actually testing it right now as we speak. Um, we just got the build the last build we just got. Um, had that included, and we're testing right now. Awesome. Um, like I said, we're just we're thoroughly testing this stuff. But you know, most of it comes on the back end. You know, when you you know add a fee to it, or you add this to it because it's got to transfer through some wallets. So you know, I, I've tested some other wallets, and they actually don't even have certain. Um, they don't even allow tax tokens to be bought um, in their wallet because of that re- reason. Interesting. Um, so we want to, you know, not every wallet, just, you know, some that I tested. Um, but we want to make sure that is not, you know, the case with ours. Excellent. So. Excellent. And plus, we have, we do have a, a way we want. So, you know, while we're not in a rush, you know, we're all working every day. But, you know, Luna Sky is set to come out first and then we'll go down the line. You know, like probably Cody already talked about, you know, we're going to release, you know, pretty much back to back to be like a week or two, you mm-hmm. know, in the middle of them. But Luna Sky will be first. I think yeah, I think the there's not a you know hard hard and a one two three four, but you know it looks like uh, staking next and then potentially uh, games and then wallet, but um, you know obviously you're gonna potentially switch. Yeah, it could yeah the things could switch. Like the the wallet might count out for be, before the game. That'll be you know or vice versa. We're not sure of that yet. It all depends on you know how it goes towards the end. But something we're not going to do is you know as Cody probably already said we're not going to release something that's not ready. Right. You know, we want to make sure it's ready for you guys and up and running. Um, awesome. Uh, I'm not even NFT, and, and the Luna Sky looks, I mean, looks absolutely great. Uh, I know the people that are beta testing it, they, they can't get enough of it. So great I'm excited news. for you guys to see that. Yeah. Great, great news. Anything else you uh, you wanted to add? or? Uh, no, not much. Okay. Just, just hanging out on this. Uh, yeah. You know, I, guess it's a ho- I guess it's a holiday weekend. It I is, always yeah. wonder that, like, it, you know, what so fourth of july is what on tuesday, tuesday. yeah so you really if it's if it's on a thursday you would probably celebrate it the week after because it's closer to the weekend you probably focus Maybe, on like know, right like that. yeah yeah so now that it's on a tuesday you usually do it because we're having a cookout tomorrow and i don't even know it my, uh, about five minutes ago. my fellow canuck friends uh, this is canada day actually so uh so kind of like her version of the independence day uh did you say did you, is it what did you say happy canada uh, I said happy Canada, Canada Day. Right. Happy Canada Day. Yeah, Happy yeah. Canada Day, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's when uh, the uh, Canadians basically. I'm still part of the Commonwealth, but uh, Canada is basically independent. Uh, so you know, basically with the Commonwealth, you agree that kind of like the United Nations, where if one of the Commonwealth countries is under threat, then we would collectively respond to that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was a, uh, I was, um, I joke a lot. I joke around a lot with Sam and the, and the, and the boys uh, all the time. Uh, I was like, so me and Sam had this thing where, you know, uh, I'll get on him about, uh, England, you know, where, or, you know, or the, or the, U, 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 or the UK. Um, and I'll be like, uh, you know, you know, this weekend as last like, fourth of July is when we got independence from, from you guys, you know, and became a superpower of the world. Like, I'll just like joke with them, you know, like go way over the top. And then, like, he'll come back and he was like, yeah, we had to let go of so many little countries. And I asked him, does he know the date, you know, um, of the, the year, actually, that the U.S. had their independence, July 4th. And what was the year? And he didn't know the year. You know, I mean, I'm sure I don't know how many Americans probably know. I mean, I know it's 1776. Right. Uh, but I don't know how many actually, you know, I wanted to see if he actually knew that. And he didn't. Um which, you know, I rubbed in his face. I had to. <laughs> you got to take an opportunity when you can. 
because yeah, Sam knows everything. So you know, when he doesn't know something, you know, I like to like rub it. I mean, he, he doesn't act like he knows everything, but he, uh, you know, he does have a lot of answers. So when he doesn't. I'm like, ha, I got gotcha. you. And I joke. I got. I was joking with him all morning. It was funny. <laughs> right on. It was funny. Awesome. Yeah. It's um, with uh, how does it look for um, for is it falling on a Tuesday? Um, I'm just curious. So I'll just give me a thumbs up if you have Monday off as a, a, a company you're working for, or do you have to go in on Monday? Because uh, some people are get a long weekend and some people don't. So if you get a long weekend, you don't. Yeah, you don't either. Yeah. I know you guys uh, in the team, yeah, you're working all the time, so you never get days off, really. Uh, looks like majority of people are saying they got to work on Monday. Well, I mean, look, if, we, if Cody or me went to Sam and said, hey, we're going to take off this day, mm-hmm. he wouldn't say no. Sure. You know, like he'd be like, OK, no problem. Thanks for telling us. You know, it's it's not a big deal. It's not like we're forced to work. You right. know, we work because we want to, you know, exactly. like I, I have a cookout tomorrow. You know, I'm like, hey, guys, I'll be busy from, you know, two to six. Just let everyone know. And I got a cookout or whatever. You know, Cody does the same thing. Rocket and even, even Sam, like, I'd be like I'll be busy for this amount of hours or, you know, whatever it is. So we're very, you know, communicative in the way we do stuff. You know, someone needs a whole day off or a couple of days off. No problem. You know, just talk, talk to us and we do it. You know, we cover right. each other, right. you know. Awesome. Yeah. What do you, uh, with your cookout, so are you going to use steak, burgers? What do you think you're going to do? Well, we got a, I got a pool in the backyard. So I think, I think we have some, I'm not having any of my friends over, but my family's having some friends over, you know, burgers, hot dogs, and then some fireworks. I guess some, uh, I think uh, one of my family members drove to West Virginia and bought some bigger fireworks. They don't sell them in Maryland. So we're going to find a place to set them off. Nice. Yeah, we're not allowed any of that stuff over here. Yeah, it's weird. It goes from like state to state. Yep. You know, of what's allowed and what's not allowed. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if it's just California in general or, or Southern California, but the risk of fire is too great. You know, there's, yeah. you know, the people literally, go ahead. It's the whole West Coast. Yeah. Um, and, 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 except Arizona. And from there. Yeah, Arizona. I mean, a lot of people go from uh, California to Arizona to buy the illegal fireworks and then bring them back. Yeah, well, you guys got a lot of wildfires and stuff. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. Dry. I mean, it's been yeah. raining here for about a week straight. So, you know, yeah, exactly. I'll, People I'll mow, mow their uh, mow their like field, and just a little spark from the blade on a on a stone will set a fire. So, yeah, yeah. I, I live in the uh, I live in the southern United States, um, and there is a this time of year there is a fireworks stand like every mile <laughs> if you every every other mile there's a ginormous tent full of fireworks uh, that's just how it is down here awesome. yeah cody and paul i'm curious because of all the work you guys have, have been doing and rocket do you even know what a weekend is anymore it's a good question you know um some of us have more than one job too so yep. you know you know working for evergrow is essentially like being on call 24 seven, like you're always available. You're always doing something. And like Paul said, I mean, there are times where, you know, we have things going on personally where we're not necessarily available for 24 hours or something, but you know, a lot of us, uh, we have day jobs, you know, and we have Evergrow and we have to balance and manage those things. And then on top of it, we have a, a life, a personal life that we have to balance and manage too. But, you know, we're dedicated to all of those things and that's why we're here. I'm just, yeah, like obviously my job is only with Evergrow, but that's what Cody said. It's like being on call. So it's not like I'm work. It's not like I'm working ten hours or twelve hours straight, like throughout the day. I may work like you know four or five hours and take a break, and the next thing you know, I work four or five hours at night. So I'm talking to the devs, which are you know twelve hours in front of me, or you know talking to you know uh, Sam. Um, you know, if it's two in the morning, so he wakes up in the morning because he goes to bed around you know, seven, eight o'clock PM my time. But that's when, you know, uh, me and Cody and rocket talk more right around six, seven o'clock, uh, PM, uh, Eastern central time. Um, that's when we really talk the most to each, to each other. And that's when really Sam, you know, that's, that's really his bedtime. Um, so, you know, 
you know, it's either that or we talk in the morning. Um, but that's when us, you know, we talk a lot, but so that's really what my schedule is like, um, is it's, you know, kind of on call, you know, but you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. That's why I feel like I don't get, um, you know, I don't get like a, like a eight hour, eight hour or a 10 hour, eight to 10 hour, you know, night sleep might get like four hours. I take just naps all the time. Um, but yeah, me, I, I get my days mixed up all the time. I have no idea like when it's Friday or Wednesday, all the days seem, seem the same to me. I don't have like a, a routine schedule and I don't like that it actually bothers me, but you know, look until we get going and we're, you know, got some utilities out and we got a good, you know, thing going and everything's in, then I'll, you know, get some more structure in my life. Then I'll be happy. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast in the space. Anyone out there in the in the uh, uh, on the spaces right now that works in the space, I see a lot of people out there that are friends of ours that work um, in the space. Also, you know, they know how it is. Yeah, it, there's no like you clock in, it's nine to six. I mean, this is it's variable, right? It's, <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. You know, you work in the space, you have a lot of different things going on at different times. You can't structure it into an eight to five Monday through Friday. It just doesn't work that way. So essentially, it's kind of like being on call all the time. You know, you have a task to complete or you have a meeting at this time. You are waiting for something else to come through. It does. You start to work on that, et cetera. You know, I mentioned it's a bit of a challenge, too, when you're dealing with, let's say, um, I know with the wallet, with the payment providers and all that stuff, because they're all over the world. Right. So you got to adapt to their time zone. So, yep, yeah, exactly. All, all over the world. Yeah. And it's it's well, you try to get them to adapt to your time, too. You know, you kind of talk to them and then, you know, after months, you kind of know what each other's times, you know, and then you kind of just schedule a meeting for this time, you know, or that time. And you know what's best for both of you. You know, maybe it's late in the day for them and it's earlier, you know, for you. So you're kind of trying to find the best for both of you, you know, unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, But, yeah, it's definitely difficult. But I remember, you know, I want to I kind of take this time to say I, I, I told Cody and Rocket this. You know, like, you know, the way, you know, work in Evergrow is, you know, usually, you know, since the the court, the the main team, you know, since they left, you know, and, and the, the team kind of rose up, even my, myself, you know, I quit my job at the very beginning when I was just, you know, a community manager and I worked my way up and really we, wor- we all worked our way up, um, you know, by showing Sam um, that, you know, we could do the job or, you know, what, what our strengths were. Um I didn't have another job, you know, where I had to do that and then show Sam, you know, what I was worth and doing all these things. Cody and Rocket, they did. So, you know, they had to, you know, show to, they had to prove, you know, what they could do, you know, for Evergrow, you know, while also having another job, you know, that is extremely difficult, you know, um, even others that have, you know, been with Evergrow and had left already. Um, they had to do the same thing. It is not easy at all. I mean, I found it even hard doing it without a job, you know, and these guys did it with a job, you know, which t- it's, you know, I've even talked to them like, man, I didn't know if I could, I don't know if I could have done that at the beginning, you know, not getting paid and, you know, working, you know, during the day on the phone, you know, doing my day job and do it ever grow on the phone and my computer on the phone all day. You know, I don't know if I could have done that, you know, so I, I give the, I, I tell them all the time. I'm like, I don't know how you guys did it. I, give you guys praise uh, for doing it um but they they really you know obviously showed that's why they're at the position that they're at um because of the work they they put in you know but also having other jobs which is absolutely amazing um and i don't just say that here in front of you guys i've told them personally i'm pretty fortunate um i've got an incredibly supportive wife who you know is really really patient she you know you know she doesn't really involve herself in the crypto you know what i mean all that much but but she knows how much i put in and how much time goes in and you know she's that'll bring me back a little bit sometimes because i'm kind of all in kind of guy and uh hey uh you know the washing machine needs fixing hey, hey oh yeah that's right you know or uh, i need you to do this yeah absolutely you know and so i couldn't do it without her honestly um without her support I, I got to chime in right there. I think that's a great call out and I am right there with you, man. It's like, I, I get a lot of support from my fiance and my family and my fiance doesn't have anything to do with crypto. She um, doesn't listen to these spaces. She doesn't really want to know much about it. I'm working on it, slowly working on it, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because like she supports me, you know? Um, 
And, and I, I totally know what you mean by that, Steve, because it's like without that, I don't think I'd be able to be as committed as I am to it, you know? So I have to thank her. And I think that goes for any of us out here in the space, you know, let's, let's thank our family and, and even our friends too, who sometimes we spend a lot more time now doing this than maybe we did hanging out and, 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 and conversing with them, you know? Um, but we're all, you know, we're all involved in something we believe in, you know, we all are involved in something we're committed to from community to staff, you know? So I think also, I think they also kind of um, halfway like it. I think everyone in here is probably going to put up their hand or, you know, say something about this. Everyone in here probably has, you know, everyone in their family or their friends where they try to talk crypto to and they, you know, are tired of hearing of it, you know, from you or they're just like, I don't understand. So why do you keep talking to me about this? You know, and you want someone to talk to about that, but there's really no one. You know, unless you, you know, I'm sure some people have friends, you know, that they're, you know, in their personal lives. But, you know, really the only people I talk crypto with is, you know, uh, you know, guys that never grow in the community, you know, and my friends around in the yeah. community. I mean, but my, my family and my friends, they don't want to hear about it because they don't <laughs> understand it. And I understand yeah. like it took me, you know, I just don't understand it all. You know what I mean? It took you know, a good four or five months to even get a basic understanding of, you know, what we're doing. No one else wants to hear all this technical stuff. You know, they really don't care. So they actually, you know, us having this little community and everything gives us an outlet so they don't have to hear it. You know, even though we're excited to tell them about it, you know, they really don't get it. And I'm sure every one of us, you know, has that, you know, that there's people in their lives that are just like, and they got to, you know, but it's good also to, you know, kind of leave it here and have another life, you know, have your own life, you know, outside of it. You know, I don't. Yeah, I just wanted to comment, Paul, that uh, you touched on a subject right there that's the secret weapon that you should be uh, going after. And that's the ability to make it a mainstream topic and not this geeked out thing that nobody understands. If you can simplify it and make it something something that everybody's going to talk about, you're going to make this very successful. Yeah, great point. I'd love to uh, check a... um do a little poll in here with you guys um how many of you guys like talk literally like crypto to your family and so go ahead we'll start with that question first a thumbs up if you do talk with your crypto with your family i think we all try <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point let's see how many thumbs here yeah they tell me to shut up yeah like after yeah they're just like i appreciate it i'm i support you i'm with you about it but i don't get it i don't i wish you all the best you know and i share it with them you know um especially back in 2021 you know i think they cared more to listen back in 2021 because making you know really yeah. really good money yeah. so you know i'm a very generous with my family and stuff so i think they you know they really didn't you know they would listen they didn't care uh, yeah when you show funny. your DeFi wallet balance and it's like you know oh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it gets attention for sure yeah definitely <laughs> Right now, I think my fiance has heard more about this in the past, I don't know, maybe three or four months than the previous entire year put together because of everything that's gone on with the builds, the daily meetings, just the constant grind. Like it has been a, 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 a massive grind for quite some time, you know? So every day I'm like, yeah, this and that, and this build thing and that dev and oh. <laughs> you know, and she's just smiling, looking at me like, all right, man, I hear you. I hear Doesn't that you. say something, though, that they give you the space to, because yeah. they know you care about it so much, right? Yep. And, and they just let you do your thing. And there's like, you know, and they want, like I said, once in a while, they got to bring you back into reality and say, okay, you know, you do have responsibilities outside of this. Yeah. So make sure you keep some balance there, right? Could, couldn't, couldn't do it, though, without their support. I think we could probably all agree with that, you know? Absolutely. I think. Yeah, and just you know, remember and uh, early days of the internet were the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Absolutely. I think, you know, Cody just said something about, you know, the past four or five months getting excited about, you know, with Luna Sky and this coming and that coming. I mean, you know, while the community is sitting back, like, I wish we can share in that excitement. And we get it, guys. You know, we totally understand, you know, and. We hope very, very, very soon you'll be we'll be able to share that with you, and you can see why we've been this excited, you know, for this. Um, I hope you can hear it through our voices, you know, through Cody's voice, Rocket's voice, 
um, even Steve's, you know, he's been a, you know, beta tester and other people. So, you know, we get it, you know, we hear, I, I, you know, cause I listen to the community, I see the comments and stuff and they're like, just release it already. or just this and that. Like, you know, we hear us talk about how excited we are, you know, but this development stuff is, I mean, what Cody and I, and, you know, the team have learned in this, you know, the past two years, you know, last really year, this development stuff is, it's very difficult. Um, as far as, you know, details and working with the right people, um, the stages you have to go through, you know, Oh, you think you're almost there. You're not, you know, um, it's, it's quite a ride. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Cody had said earlier that when I had asked about the, you know, the beta testers and, you know, the bug bash and stuff. And, you know, I asked what, you know, what was their thoughts on it? And I think, uh, Cody, if you want to say it again on their impressions, um, kind of their thoughts, was they going, they get it. They understand that. Yeah, that was rocket to said that actually. And it was just really well put, you know, like it, it's such a great point again to just reiterate because, yeah, he said that, you know, their perception of it was they now that they are on the inside looking and touching it and, and they are seeing all of the things it took to get to this point to build it, they get it, you know, and, and it makes perfect sense. You, you wouldn't really know on the outside, but again, there is just an infinite amount of components um, that it takes to build something, whether it's a wallet marketplace you know or anything it's uh hundreds of meetings hundreds if not thousands and thousands of man hours you know just a lot even for me uh testing the wallet i was uh you know, in the, in the you know the very beginning i was kind of like i guess it just opened my eyes to like, like i just you just expect it to work you know what i mean you expect things to work and and then you know it's just these yeah. little this is little idiosyncrasies you know like why is this right here or you know i mean and in you know, it, logically, you would think it makes sense, but then you start playing with it. You're like, wait a second. And, you know, you get all this feedback from the different testers, and it's going into, you know, getting funneled into this document and their, you know, collaboration. And, and it, just, it kind of blew my mind just how much effort is going into this. Yeah, and that's, you know, not even all of it. But you're seeing uh, below that surface level now. You know, we talk a lot about that 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 classic image of the glacier, you know, it's just the tip yeah. sticking out of the water and underneath it is this massive, massive iceberg, you know? Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's super vast and anyone that is involved in the space and building and web three, just in general, or really just in the creation, you know, process of putting together, whether it's a company or a product or an idea, they know that too. You know, I mean, there is a lot that goes into it strategizing and planning and being organized to is extremely important along the way. You know, it can really help to either facilitate the progression of it and make it easier and make it more efficient or even inhibit it at times, you know, if it, you know, obviously if it's not well put together, if it's not well organized, et cetera. Where do you, um, I think you guys have answered this before, but where do you see, you know, after the release of the initial utilities, say that just group them in four, just for, just for simplicity. Um, obviously, Games, Lucre Games is a whole different animal than a wallet or Luna Sky V2. But where do you see, like, let's just say theoretically mid July, right? And say something comes out, uh, whether it be Luna Sky or whatever. Um, obviously, the work doesn't stop there, right? You guys are going to continue working on the and the next like update, right? But where does it the focus continue, and then where does it start to veer off and like, okay, now we need a different utility or Let's build on something else. Or does it never really end? It's kind of a great, yeah, I don't a think, cryptic question. Go ahead. I don't think it ever really ends. I mean, I think that's the obvious answer, right? You work hard to develop a particular product within your, your business or products within your business. Those come out. You work on maximizing those in the sense of making the best they can be. Sometimes they will adapt over periods of time to become better, just like any company's products. You know, They may change a little bit from the first initial development to release of them. And in the meanwhile, you're constantly strategizing about the next step forward, the next product for the next year, two, five you got to have plans. You got to have a, you know, you know, the old saying, like, what's your five year plan? You got to have those kind of things. And I think that uh, all of those aspects are what's really occurring, you know. And there's a there's a flip side to that where you have to see, you know, what happens after release, um, whether, you know, one gets traction faster than the others 
um, whether something happens to make one of them boom, then you, you know, push more, maybe marketing money into that, more people into that. If like some big project comes aboard, like say Luna Sky or whatever, um, let's say with, you know, Alice, if, you know, it starts gaining lots and lots of people, you know, you put more resources or put more resources into that. Maybe, you know, the environment changes in six months and, you know, this additional thing needs to be added that we didn't think of or wasn't around say six months ago. Um, you know, yeah, exactly. so, so on top of what Cody just said, there's a plan, but there's also stuff that's just going to come up randomly or just how the market is going or, you know, how the overall general, you know, use of the product is going, um, feedback from the community, all that stuff. So while there's a plan in place, also there's going to be stuff that just kind of pops up out of nowhere, but we have to see, you know, where stuff goes, you know, after it's released one month, two months, three months, you know, and go, yeah. and, and go from there. That's why it never really is. It's never over, you know. Something will come out. That doesn't mean it's over because, again, it's like you know, the build goes on, right? <laughs> so, so you, so you would say with with some confidence that you've had the discussion that beyond one, two, three years. Absolutely, you know, future cast is so important, and that's the great thing about Sam. And it's like that's why um, he is beyond the best person for the job here. You know, I mean, obviously, he's able to do that with his experience in finance. He's able to future cast. He's able to look at that, you know, um, one, three, five year down the road for us, help, you know, the company be financially in a place where it can be stable for the next couple of years, no matter what happens, right? During that time period, you plan for those next couple of years and so on and so on. Right. Like I said, stuff could change. You know, one of the utilities can make, you know, could just take off and make millions and millions of dollars and, Next thing you know, we have, you know, some extra money or, you know, crypto has a, a bull market and, you know, the marketing wall gets, you know, plush with more funds. And then we can do something else like branch off into into this a little bit faster than we would have. Um, you know, so many variables out there. I mean, or, you know, we have to look at the other end, too, which Sam always does is, you know, what if it doesn't? You know, what if the, this bear market lasts another year or two and it takes a little more while to get it off the ground? You know, we need those funds for a longer period of time so you look at it from both angles you know and always you know what plan what is it what's the saying what plan for the worst wish for the best yeah um, yeah kind of how you have to do you know and I, I know some people have asked like you know can we survive can can ever grow survive an extended bear market and i i think yes. resounding you said yes right so it's yes fine. yeah i'm not even worried about that yeah yeah that's good news. I'm, you know, I think the general consensus. We, you know, we had this little discussion earlier, but you know, we kind of think we're in this kind of gray. Like, we're we think we're towards the end of this bear market. Um, you know, um, a lot can change, of course, but I think right now the biggest uh, obstacle is you know the regulators right now. It seems. You know, there's all there's perception too, but that that changes over time. You know, we're seeing all these little indications that you know payment providers coming online and. And the different companies are accepting crypto, and there's a slow march forward. Eventually, there will be this kind of like it's kind of like you know we were talking about like Chat GPT, this you know this this remarkable piece of technology that in the last seven months has gone from was very impressive to like leaps and bounds above its original. And so technology is just like that, and crypto is going to be like that too, where you're going to see like this slow adoption, and all of a sudden you see a big jump. And then it's, you know, and then it's like plateaued for a little bit and then another big jump and eventually it's ubiquitous. And then you're like, how do we get here? That's why, that's what I believe it's going to be like. Well, we're also too about to start, you know, actually making money, you know, mm -hmm. now, whether it's a little bit or a lot, you know, whatever that is through Luna Sky and Atlas, you know, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to break even, you know what I mean? Um, let's let's just say the worst case scenario we don't break even mm -hmm. um you know we're not going to be losing you know like you know like the staff money and what you know we're already we're not running on a, a huge budget right now um but you know when the when the um utilities come out hopefully there's a little bump in volume that should help refill the market while a little bit also and then you got you know the utilities making money hopefully you know we can at least break even you know I, i'm obviously we're shooting for you know way more than that um but i'm just you know trying to be you know plan for the worse and you know we'll definitely be able to break even mm -hmm. and you know make a little bit of money so you know that money that we have you know already saved up you know that's still there you know for you know we'll, we'll use that for marketing and stuff and sam will budget that out correct correctly 
um, you know, as the time comes and see what the market does and everything. So you've, you've said it before the, the marketing plan for Atlas. I think um, when you told me, I was kind of a little taken aback because I was pretty excited because I was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And I think it's going to work really, really well. And so um, I think, I think, you know, you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised once we get going. So, um, and, and, you know, people can, you know, if they really thought about it, they would already know what it is. You know, if they really think about it and it's not something we're going to talk about, you guys are going to have to see it, you know, cause we really don't want to sit there and talk about it and just put, you know, what you don't do is just put your, you know, marketing plans on the website and say, Hey guys, here's how we're doing it. And if it does good, you know, next thing you know, everyone in the world is doing it. You know, exactly. we don't, we don't want that, you know? Um, but you know, we'll also won't be a secret. You'll be able to see exactly what we're doing, but we're not going to like, you know, put it on billboards and put it out there for everybody, but you'll be able to see it, you know? And I'm sure if you've listened to every single space and, you know, you've heard us talk enough about it on, you know, what the plan is. And there's, you know, even more plans, like Steve said, that, you know, we have under our belt that we're not just saying yet for purposes, you know, to protect you guys, to make sure we can, you know, launch with some steam behind us and new ideas and innovate. Um, from your, you guys' perspective, this is kind of for, you know, you, uh, Cody, Rocket, where do you see um, people's, uh, that gets them the most excited? Do you think it's like the the partnership with Abstract VR? Is it the wallet? Is it Luna Sky? I guess it depends on what you're interested in. But overall, if you can get an impression, what do you think most people are excited the most about? And go with Cody first. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, user specific case by case scenario. I mean, I think in general, people are just excited to get something out. You know, I really mm-hmm. do. That's it's good like point. Luke, uh, Luna Sky or Atlas, et cetera. They're excited to get something out. That's mm-hmm. my knee jerk react or answer to that. I, yeah, I think that people are just itching to get something out. And I, I totally understand why. What do you think rocket or Paul? I'm right with Cody. Like, you know, I'm not a huge NFT guy, but I want Luna Sky out so bad because I want you guys to see it, you know, and use it and get that feedback and, you know, us to deliver something, you know, and, you know, especially for Cody and Rocket, you know, um, even though, you know, me and Sam have put in our work into Luna Sky also, those guys have like killed themselves for Luna Sky and uh, see it come to fruition um, for them and the community. You know, I feel like it's going to bring us more together. It'll show people we delivered something and then, you know, you, you know, and also there's that user specific thing. You know, some people like NFTs more, some people like, you know, just playing crypto more in the wallet, you know, with the revenue stuff, you know, NFTs, are, even though we're planning to make money off of it, you know, NFTs more community based, you know, we'll get a lot of, and, and also I think Luna Sky will get a lot of, you know, NFT, you know, collections of artists more interested in us. You know, a lot of people in crypto already know what Evergrow is, but, you know, we're new to the NFT world. Um, and that's what Luna Sky is going to bring in. Hopefully people look past, which I think they will. You know, people are smart. You know, people behind Luna Sky. And that's where Evergrow will, you know, do do really well. What do you think, Rocket? I don't know. Rocket, you still there? He might be tied up. Yeah, he's probably tied up. Yeah. Um, uh, just a quick poll. You know, let's uh, show a thumbs up. Um, who is really excited about if you were to pick one, most excited about, would it be Luna Sky? Give me a thumbs up. And if it, let's say, let's say the, let's use the heart for Atlas Wallet. And let's do the waving for uh, crypto staking, like uh, Evergrow staking. So I'm just scanning through. Kind of a mixed bag. Kind of a mixed bag. But I think you're right. I think a lot of people want to, a lot of hearts there. But people want to see the the first product launch. I think the momentum starts there, um, you know. And I think I think we're getting. There's a lot of people that are coming back into the market. I've seen. Um, they've been away for a bit, and they're coming back in, and they're saying, you know, hey, where are we, right? Um, and here we are. We're just uh, every week we're grinding away on Twitter, you know, uh, Discord. Telegram, Facebook, and doing the spaces and uh, to keep everybody informed. And it's funny, you know, I'll see I'll see somebody who listened to a space that was like three months ago, and it'll pop up as a notification. They'll like it. And I was like, why that one? Why would you listen to that one? But for whatever reason, right? You know what? I'm 
I'm really excited about talking about new new stuff. You know, I know we've been, you know, and I'm sure all you guys feel the same way. I'm just going to, you know, say what everyone's thinking. I can't wait to come in here and talk about, you know, not, you know, waiting for release. You know, oh, this is coming and, you know, really excited about this. You know, I'm excited to talk about the actual, you know, the actual utility. I want people to come up, you know, when Luna Sky is released and you have your first, first space or maybe we have, you know, one. You know, I want to hear people come up. I want to hear what they have to say about it. You know, was it worth the wait? You know, what do you, you know, some real NFT people. I, I you know, and then with the wallet when it comes out, you know, I, I, I want, I really want to hear from people, not just in the comments, but, you know, up on the spaces. I want to, I'm going to get, get their feedback. I'm really excited about that. Um, and just talking about other stuff, you know, even, you know, um, maybe doing some spaces on, you know, Atlas Wild or Luna Sky. Um, excited about that. Um, just to, you know, kind of change it up. You know, we've been working so hard on this stuff. We're, you know, we're itching to talk talk about, you know, talk more in depth about it, you know, with you guys actually having your hands on it, you know. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. I think, um, you know, it's a kind of a catalyst for a lot of different things because things get set into motion, like when Luna Sky launches. Now we're looking at the Evergrowth Man NFTs again, right? We're looking at marketing. You were looking at the, the, you know, people have kind of put this in the background, but the Tesla 50,000 BUSD, that's still there. That's all starting up again. And uh, I think, you know, maybe we'll do a maybe giveaway or something like that, you know, just start at the launch. Look, we um, will, yeah, it's going to be on everybody, you know, and Cody and Rocket already have a plan, but, you know, so when you guys to pump that out there to, you know, on to NFT people out there, you know, to get them to go to the site and try to get them to buy one. Remember, all that will go. You know, all that will go to buy back and burn. You know, let's see if we can sell, you know, just as many as we sold the first time around. You know, let's, you know, that all will, that all will, you know, benefit us. You know, so it's going to be up to all of us, um, not just, you know, us on the team, which we'll, we'll do our job. Um, but we ask you, 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 do, you do your, your job as well. Um, so we need everybody as a team. And that's be very, very important. Yeah, thanks for saying that. It's really, really important that because I mean, really, the community is everything. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Anybody? Uh... Steve, you commented earlier about the three hour spaces. And uh, personally, I love the three hour spaces. When we get these utilities out, mm -hmm. I envision a seven or eight hour space. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, to be honest, I get more positive feedback than I do from negative, honestly, by far. People enjoy the content. They like being in the spaces. They like the positivity. They, you know, they maybe they had a question answered that um, that they posed the question with on Discord or in Twitter. Um, that's what we're here for. We're here to help educate you, inform you, keep you know keep the positivity and and you know sometimes people just have random questions that pop up. But what about this? You know, and we can address that right here in this space. Not every week is an AMA. It should it shouldn't be. But um, but when we have the opportunity to ask. The key people um let's do that so yeah well let me ask a question and you know if the other speakers rather than me and cody and steve if you guys can talk or maybe have someone come up um you know listen to other spaces and stuff and you know let's say after the first hour you know steve has the spaces after the first hour hour and a half we get done with the updates and stuff like that i've heard other spaces and those guys are just in there you know some are drinking and some are you know, they're just, they're kind of BSing around, you know, back and forth, but having fun, really, right? Like, do you guys like that? Like, you know, um, you know, not, not from like a, not from a formal space, like an Evergo did a formal space, but like, you know, do you like the, you know, the BS talk about, you know, someone talks about their life or, you know, they're joking around laughing back and forth. You know, I see a lot of, I hear, I'm in a lot of other spaces and they're pretty, some of them are, some of them are crowded, but, you know, it's really not really content they're just in there bsing because they you know it's a whole community really you know can anyone comment on that do you like that more um obviously people like updates but i'm talking about after that than just serious talk all the time is there some of you guys can speak to that this is why i'm sorry you're broken up there cwp cwp you're, so you're broken up just a little bit I said, um, this, you guys talking about personal things is what builds, helps build our faith in you and the project. Um, 
and the humor is great too. I still want to see that cage match. Um, How about the rest of you guys? Um, thumbs up if you do like the kind of just the casual interaction, or are you here for um, the info? And after the info, you got everything you needed to drop off. I want um, someone to come up and talk. Yeah. Zelda, why don't you talk a little bit? Why don't people come up and talk more? We need people to come up and talk more. That's what we need. So that's what I would like. I like interacting with people. Yeah. You know, but I get it. A lot of people don't like to. You know, I don't like talking to people. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, look, I hear a lot of, I see a lot of, um, gifts out there everyone's making fun of me these days and stuff and i gotta tell you it's <laughs> it's actually great i get on after a couple hours on uh uh on twitter and uh whatever go love is putting up memes of me and um well you I, and then you showing off your beach pod i mean oh yeah oh my god <laughs> so i sent that to my family and my niece that was 15 she asked oh, me no. why i why i sent her oh, a gosh. picture of a guy she didn't see the face that was me that it was a joke she just asked her why i sent her with a guy with her shirt off you know? oh, oh that failed oh, yeah. Gosh. oh yeah. idea <laughs> oh it's too funny I, I love it though i think uh, i had a back and forth with um uh what's her screen name um not naked NFT girl or yeah, uh, yeah. The, yeah. So we had a back and forth, and um, we have a little private chat where we've had like a hundred Evergo people in it. Um, but we're we did in the comments, and we're going back and forth, um, just friendly banter, you know. And I like that kind of stuff. Um, I if you can't laugh at yourself, um, and you can't you know, you know, have fun with someone else, then you know you're taking life too too seriously. Now understand there's boundaries. You know, you don't insult someone or whatever, or hit a soft spot. Um, but I love that kind of stuff. I can laugh at myself. And people make fun of me being bald, and you know this kind of stuff. I, I love it. You know, as long as it's in good fun. Now, if someone I didn't like, you know, sat there and you know, I mean, I'd still laugh. I still would laugh that off it. But you know, someone I didn't like, you know, is coming at me. It's a little bit different. I just wouldn't respond. Um, but I, I enjoy that banter. You know, I really do. I do it in my personal life, and it's just the way I am. I do it a lot more in my personal life. Um, I do it a lot with the guys, um, with Cody and Rocket and Sam. Um, and then I, you know, Cody's always serious. So I try to, and Rocket, they're always so serious. So I try to jab at them. And they finally come back at me and it's a good time. Um, those guys are always serious. You know, you guys are. <laughs> no, we're not. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, only when it's time to be serious, and then other than that, um, you know, I, I'm 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 pretty ridiculous. Yeah, he is. That yeah. Way. yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's sometimes though where they're trying to be serious, and I got to throw in there a joke or something like that. Um, yeah, that's when we're like, all right, all yeah, right, hold it's, up. This is my nature. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it sometimes when I see an opportunity. I don't know. I think Cody might be the fragile type. I'm, I'm a sensitive type. I'm strong, but sensitive. <laughs> Has anybody noticed that Cody often doesn't comment or respond, but if somebody posts something about heavy metal, he's all over it? Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> That's a trigger for him. <laughs> it, yep, it's a trigger. I'm triggered, <laughs> yeah. I'm triggered by I'll tell you, CWP teams. is excellent at taking banter. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So I was going to ask you, Cody. Last it was a couple of days ago. Somebody had mentioned a, a heavy metal band, and you definitely re you responded to that. And it I was never... Michael Garber. He mentioned Halloween and how he was a big fan of them in high school. And I was like, that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's awesome. It's like the German Iron Maiden. <laughs> right on. Well, guys, you, you you got an opportunity here to come up and. Uh, share in the uh, space if you want to if you want to ask some questions it doesn't have to be anything serious it doesn't have to be necessarily about about the uh, the project um otherwise I, I love people asking me questions yeah I, I don't mind at all i you know if i can't answer it i can't but i love even about my personal life i don't care at all i love talking to people that's what i do you know one thing i like to apologize and i do this i mean 
do, make this mistake even with my own, with, with the with the team. I never like like with Twitter. I never like people's posts, like ever. Like I and I do it. I've done it for the last like ever since. Um, you know, uh, social media has come come about. Like I, I'll repost stuff or retweet or share stuff like on even my personal accounts. Well, I really don't do anything on my personal accounts anymore. Um, but on Twitter, like I won't like any posts. I'll just skim by it. You know, I may retweet it, but I just I won't I won't like it. Like and it happens all. But it's just say it's something. It, it's not like I don't mean to. It's just I never have done it like ever. And I got to start doing it more. Um, it's kind of it annoys me when I go on and I see I haven't liked something in like weeks, you know, because it shows people you care, you know, when you do it. That you engage with their post. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm trying to engage more, you know, um, I'm usually using that like that. You know? Do but you, now, um, now we're busy, so it's kind of, it's a little more difficult now, but you know, it is what it is. In terms of like, you know, some, like for me, I tend to stay away a little bit from political discussion just because it can be so um, polarizing. Um, you know, but do you do you like to engage on all topics, or do you mostly like pick and choose? Like, okay, um, like Denny's, like Denny just did a big job there where he finished a roofing job, and he showed a you know a picture of that. Like, do you engage with that, or or let's say it's a, a political thing? Do you engage with that, or or do you pick and choose? Um, on a broad spectrum, I gotta. I mean, I pick and choose because of the position that I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'm usually, I have, I have so, I'm very opinionated person. Very, very, no. opinionated, especially, <laughs> yeah, uh, very, very opinionated. And I get, and, and the thing is, I don't mind not being liked. So, like, I, I would love to, you know, if someone made fun of or was attacking one of my, you know, friends on thing, I'll like, to, I would love to go at them. But being the position that I'm in, I work for a company or project that is, you know, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, you know, all cryptos on, on Twitter. So, you know, it's, it's not good for me to do that. If I went, if, you know, I went out and, you know, started, you know, I, you know, I have a lot to say on other projects, you know, other people, you know, and I can't just go out there cussing them and being like, you know, F you, you know, da, 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 or whatever. I mean, I would, God, I got, I got so much that's pent up over the last two years to say about like certain stuff that's gone down or certain stuff, certain stuff that I don't remember don't even remember now but i want to say but you know if i do you know i mean i do you know it turns in this big it would turn this big old fight maybe it'd be a twitter war between projects and i don't want to bring that on the community you know so um i try to stay away from the political stuff obviously i may comment on sam's sam stuff on his personal account every now and then um but it's just every now and then and it's just you know because i know he's a lefty and i'm more more towards the right but I, i'm a pretty big mob I'm more to the right, but I voted moderate, you know, throughout my you know years. But I really don't like to get into political talk because um, it's a no-win situation. But I don't mind discussing it as long as it doesn't get into insults. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't do it now. But I, I do want to put more personal stuff on my Twitter, mm-hmm. um, like from my life. But you know, so I'm going to start doing that a little bit more because everything is just ever grow. And I get like my name is. I was actually thinking I was going to talk to Sam and the team about this if I should change my name to just like, you know, Paul and something or, you know, crypto Paul or something to say, you know, I, but I still want to keep that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Do I, do I keep this ever grow Paul or do I, you know, change it to, you know, my first and last name? Um, that sounds, like, sounds like a poll in the making. Yeah. But I don't want, I'm not, I'm not abandoning ever grow. You know what? What about a second uh, account like uh, uh, Sam does has, and and so do I. I thought about that, and I you know have that, but I mean literally, I mean to uh, build up another account, you know, I mean it, it would, I mean it wouldn't get, you know, I mean it takes it takes a lot actually to, you know, pay. T- Sam already had like you know Sam's been on Twitter since two thousand eleven. You know, if I had my, I do have a personal account, but I don't say much on it and it doesn't get much reach. So if I'd said something, it really, you know, really your reason you only want to say something on Twitter so people see it. And, you know, I built, I've spent so much equity into building the Evergrow Paul account up. 
um, that I kind of want to stay on that, you know? So, but there's that fine line between business and personal, you know, um, with that account. Um, so I do have to pick and choose, um, what I say, um, for the betterment of the project. Um, and I have probably posted a couple things that I shouldn't have. And, you know, Sam never tells me, um, or the, or the team, you know, we don't tell each other what to say, but if someone puts something up, that's kind of like, ah, you probably should have thought about that. You know, we, we tell each other, um, especially with me. I think I put up, you know, a couple things over the past couple of years and Sam or Cody have been like, yeah, I don't think you should have put that up. And I've taken it down uh, before because my emotions got the best of me. Um, but that's why we have a team in place. You know, we're all friends and we tell each other the truth. Um, those guys aren't as quite um, quick triggers. I am. Um, but I love to say a lot more, but I've, I've learned to temper it down. And also, you know, I don't want to give attention to people. Um, you know, I see a lot of the comments with people call me with a, a man child or this, that, the other thing or whatever it is. And I, I laugh at it. I love it. I don't mind at all. I would love <laughs> to respond to them, but no one sees that comment anyway, but me. And if I respond to them, that's what they want. And then they get hundreds, if not thousands of views, you mm-hmm. know, that's what they want. Yeah. I wouldn't mind really, but it just shows the project in a, in a bad way, but then they get more followers or likes, and it's just, you know, I'm not going to do that to them, you know? Um, but I'd love to get, I, I wouldn't mind getting into it with another, you know, person that had a, a good, good, good following, have a good back and forth with them. Like I enjoy that stuff, but it's not good for business. Yeah. So how about like after other crypto projects? Like that's my kind of, that's my line. Like, I, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to congratulate another crypto project on their success. Um, but I tend to, if they're, if they're having a hard time, things are going not necessarily for whatever reason, I tend to stay away and not engage because they got enough problems as it is. I don't need to add my, my two bits to that conversation. Um, that's just kind of how I feel. I don't know how you guys feel about that. What if you think it's a rug pull or a scam? Um, you know, I stay away from that altogether. Um, just because the uh, the ba- the kind of the blowback can be pretty significant, and so it was really worth it. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I think it's different. Of it's different of you know who you are, you know, and you know, me, Cody, Rocket, Sam. You know, we work for you know a project, so we have to take that you know into and our, our decision-making um, of really what we want to say. Now, you know, we could say it if we wanted to, um, you know, we, we have the right, but it just wouldn't be good for the project. You guys, you know, as, in, as you know, you could really say what you want um, and not, you know, get any, uh, not trouble, but, you know, wouldn't be, it's not, not like, you know, you work for Evergrow. So it's really all situational, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and how big your account is and, you know, this, that, another thing like, but I, look, I tell you this when some, I can't say when I, it's, it's never good to go back and forth with a, with a troll, you know, someone's trolling ever grow. Mm-hmm. Um, but if someone's like talking, if someone's like talking shit about us or whatever, and when, when I see in Sam, we trust go back at them, you know, look, it brings a little smile to my face, mm-hmm. but also it's like, you know, we shouldn't be giving them, you know, the time of day, you know, but, it also is kind of appreciative, you know, we're like, okay, the community has got our back, yeah, you know, 100%. and that's why we got yours, you know? So it does bring a half a smile to my face, but it's also like, ah, we shouldn't be paying them attention. That's what they want, but yeah. it's so appreciative, you know? What do you think, Cody? Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, obviously we represent the company on a different level because we work for the company. So we, we do have to be careful and we should be careful with the things that we engage and the things that we say and the things that we do publicly. That's just the way it is, you know. Um, and to Paul's point, too, it's like, you know, you get a lot of fudsters out there and stuff. I mean, the best thing to do is not engage with them. I mean, when you do, it just bumps the algorithm and pushes that and bumps them up. So there may be sometimes I might respond to some of that. There's some other times I ignore it. Uh, it is nice when I see somebody out there in the community, like kind of stand up. It definitely brings a smile to my face too, Paul. I'm with you on that. So uh, that's Bart, why I asked the question cool. that I did because um, with Evergrow, although I'm not an, an employee of the company, I still feel personally that I'm representing Evergrow, and so I've become a lot more cautious about what I say publicly. 
Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. But the thing is also is, but if, if, it's, if it's not a troll and it's just a, a hard question, you know, it's, I'll answer it. Sam answers it. Cody, Rocket, you know, well, we'll, we'll answer it, you know. Um, but, you know, we just don't make those, you know, we'll, we'll see if it's a troll. You can know, you can go look at their account, see if it was made this month. Go back and see if they've just been doing it over and over and over again. It's real easy to spot. You know, we never just sit there and block people because they asked a tough question. Like, please, like I can, we can answer any question that you want that, you know, that has to do with the project other than giving away something that's coming up or something like that. Um, you know, any big transaction that happened on the blockchain or between the wallet or this and that. You know, I think Sam did that. I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, someone, someone from, I think only answered him because they actually run another project and he was like, Oh yeah. What about this? What about that? And Sam, Sam came right back. Oh, they were like, Oh, we had bots running. That's what they said. They had, we had bots running. Remember that. Yeah. It, it said, look, look at this. And then Sam goes, Oh yeah. Look at this conversation. It's simplex testing, you know, going back and forth. And he showed them, he showed them the conversation and the wallet number. And it was like next, you know, whatever yeah. you put up there, he would have an answer for you know, he might have to go back and dig for it, but there's an answer for it. You know, there's always an answer. Um, that's why I see some of these, you know, um, other projects or whatever that, you know, it's either, you know, you're either all transparent or you're not. You know, it's hard to be, you know, in the middle. I, I don't see why you'd be in the middle because all everything can be answered. So either don't answer anything or you should be able to answer everything. You know, that's why I see other projects not answering or they answer a little bit and then not the ones they want to. I'm like, up oh, your line because I know you can answer that. I you remember some, it. sorry, you keep going. That's it. Okay. I, remember, I remember somebody, um, they were going on to uh, PooCoin, right? And they were looking at Evergrow, I think it was, or it was a loop where I can't remember now. And they were at the bottom there where you can actually look at the wallet transactions and they were comparing the buyers to the sellers and how they were identical. And or close to it, and they thought that Evergrow was, was basically like wash trading. You know, look at every I look at every project; they're all exactly. the same. Exactly. No, it doesn't. I I, I noticed it like I think a year ago <laughs> because it used to be good. Like you've seen all the buys and all the sells, mm -hmm. but now Meaningless. they're like almost almost identical on each side. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know what it represents, honestly. If somebody knows, yeah, please, please say so. Yeah, we don't, we, you know, we, we would, we wouldn't mind, you know, now there are some projects out there and they're open about it um, that do run bots um, uh, for the liquidity so they can maintain a volume to be on certain exchanges. Um, uh, but they actually tell you, uh, yeah. like Squid, Squid Grows one of them. He runs some, um, uh, he runs some volume bots and he actually has all the wallets pinned in the telegram. Um, and he told, he told his community, you know, why he's doing it, you know, which is, you know, fine. If you want to do that for your project, you know, we actually said it or whatever, you know, if we did, we would tell you guys like, Oh yeah, we're running boss speak because of this or whatever that, but it's, you know, never for, you know, volume or what would that do? We would, it wouldn't do nothing for us. You know, we'd lose money. We're not going to lose your money. Exactly. You know, make any sense. I'm curious where you guys think we are in terms of just this just from random, um, the meme coin craze. Um, you know, do you think it's going to continue on, or do you think like it's kind of like fading out? And I think it's fading out. You think so? Yeah. Um, a lot of it started transitioning back into NFTs. Yeah, I think a lot of those. What I was talking to Rocket, to, yeah, he was, he was explaining this to me that you know a lot of those meme coins were you know backed by you know a lot of the you know people in the NFT community, and so the money's going right back you know went into the meme coins and then back into the NFT community now. Um, so maybe it's be ready to be spent on NFTs, which would be perfect uh, for Luna Sky getting ready to come out. Um, right, if that were the case. Um, but look, unless you like, I was looking at, I think like like what pepe 2.0 launch of the day yeah or whatever it was and went to like 30 million i mean the really the you're only you're only gonna make any they, they do this because you know whoever buys in the first two three hours can make serious money but they don't tell you that they're launching you know they don't exactly. have this big, they don't have this big run-up so the only reason the only people that are making money are insiders. the people running the project or insiders exactly yep. 
Yeah. yeah. And they can do like a yeah. 250 X, you know, it no one else. Uh, NFT communities with the do is the let they have these, uh, uh, basically Twitter groups and they, they organize this stuff and they can make it look like a big pump and then people buy in and they cash it out. Yeah. And you know, one thing you were talked about in the past there was the, the whole liquidity. Um, you know, when it's a token, when a project's brand new, you see this big green candle, right? Even though it's a smaller buy and it gives the illusion of a, um, a big move. And then, you know, if you compound that with multiple, these, you know, the next thing you know, you got this big green candle and it suckers everybody in to uh, to buy, and then you know, obviously, people who who got in early cash out and on to the next, right? So, Maybe we should have had a Cody coin and a rocket rock to launch. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, we could, you know, I mean, you know, there's always, you know, we might be able to, you know. I don't know because we do we have high. Yeah, no. do, a, do a meme token. Dude, I mean, no, no, I'm talking. Is our, liqui- <laughs> our liquidity's you know the ratio is really high right now. Like, what was our you know like what when our market cap was this when we first launched? How much was in our LP? Our LP is like what one point nine million, almost two million right now, and what nineteen point five million market cap. What do we have in our L- LP when we had about a twenty million dollar market cap? Like what? Hundred K. How much? Like a couple hundred K, I think. Couple hundred K. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I mean, we could act. You know, it wouldn't. Oh, we could maybe thin out our liquidity pool a little bit. Maybe just thin it out and then buy some Evergrow and put it into staking. You know, put it right back to the guys. I don't know how that would work, but you know, it would. Get, we could. We could do a good rally. You know, because we do have so much, so much liquidity. You know, if there was was like that big buy that happened earlier, mm-hmm. you know, seven, you know, twelve k. Yeah, it's not like a huge candle, but if we had less liquidity, it'd be a bigger candle. But on the right. other side of that, if there were se- if there's a sell, big sell, there'd be a bigger red candle. Exactly. Yeah. You know, on it. Double yeah. short. Purely from the like the the pumping standpoint, like when you're uh, low market cap, having low liquidity is great, right? Because any buy will launch up the price. But uh, once you have a higher market cap. If you have low liquidity, I mean, it'll just get dropped down just as quick. So yeah. it's uh, like the, the best scenario we have would be to have uh, low liquidity at a low market cap and then increased liquidity at a higher market cap to lock it in. Yeah. Just mathematically. Yeah, mathematically, yeah. Because right now it'd be so hard to move, you know, without liquidity so high, which is a good thing. You know, even if there's big sells right now, it wouldn't like, it's not killing us. You know, even let's say, you know, one of the top whales were to sell, um, you know, would that eat up the entire uh, liquidity? Theoretically, I mean, not, I mean, it just it would take a lot. Uh, yeah, it would, it would take, yeah, it would take a lot. Yeah, I think the top whale, what is it, 10 trillion? What, yeah, he only has like I think he has a million dollars left if you mm-hmm. were to sell. But the thing is, that wouldn't That's be he wouldn't get that whole million. Yeah, you know, because once you, it's only a tr- you can only sell a trillion at a time. So once you sell a trillion, the price goes down. Then you right. sell another trillion, the price goes down. So it wouldn't make sense at some point. Yeah, it just keeps. Yeah, you keep. Yeah, you're cutting your legs off despite. Yeah. Whatever that saying is. Yeah, it wouldn't make any sense, and I think that's why I stopped. Um, I think we're gonna have a good run, um, and we're gonna think of some stuff, um, you know, through the marketing stuff, and when Luna Sky comes out, I think. You know, I think we're in a really good position. You know, when I look at other projects that, you know, only have a couple thousand holders, um, and you know, they only only few thousand people know about them. Um, you know, we have over 140 people that 140 thousand people that have heard of us at least, or have you know um, invested in Evergrow, and you know, people still get on. You know, people are still around, and they see us. You know, something might pop up. If we have starting to have a run when stars starts coming out and the chart starts going up, you know, that'll be the best indicator for everyone else. Then people will, you know, jump right back in. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the reach that we had, you know, same with Lucro. Look what happened. And we all had what, 4,000 holders yeah. with Lucro and look how much money that raised. And that yeah. did the first day. Crazy. Which is 4,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. I've said it before that, you know, Lucro, 
you know, in the short term is really, could really take off, you know, if, especially when you have utilities that are using it, um, you know, in the short term, I think Lucro is just a, a beautiful. It's going to be a lunar sky, right? And so the yeah. thing that a lot of folks, I, I think, don't uh, consider is that, so Luna Sky goes live. You start getting, you know, the majority of the users of Luna Sky, I mean, are not going to be on BNB. They're going to be using ETH primarily. So you have a lot of folks that have never heard of Evergrow, have never heard of Lucro, right? That just went through this meme rally. They've seen things pop, right? They still have the itch for it. Um, it's going to get interesting, I think. Why do you why do you say that, Rocket? That you know that the majority of users are going to be in ETH. Well, what do you mean that they haven't heard of us? Well, no, just like you know, like and like typically because, like with data, because yeah, we well, have a Dark Seven Twenty One platform. Well, yeah, we we've never we did not market to the uh, the greater I understand. community, and okay. so they haven't used our platform because well, there wasn't a reason to. Gotcha. So when they start using our platform. You know, you're going to have entirely new eyeballs and this entire, uh, you know, not kind of don't want to mix the terminology, but it, it is liquidity, right? It is money, right? right. That has never heard of Webergrow or Lucro is now going to be paying attention. Very so, interesting. Pretty interesting. Rocket. Think, who knows, right? I'm not going to predict yeah. anything from a price action standpoint. Who knows anymore? But um, it, it's kind of hard to think that. A lot of these folks that are now going to be paying attention won't think, all right, well, how do I get in on this action? Right. Right. And so the lucro is going to be the easiest way to yeah. get on the action, right? Low market cap. And my God, these folks now love low market cap tokens. So much. Right. Am so I so correct, it. Rocket, that the majority of the NFT community buys and sells on ETH? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Majority. Um, I'd say. Almost none on BNB. Yeah. This takes us back to, to the whole, you know, one of the, the main purposes of, you know, building a new Luna Sky was um, to seek adoption outside of the BNB community because Luna Sky, the new Luna Sky, is not BNB centric. That's very important. Yeah, it's agnostic. It's as much BNB as it is ETH. But again, the only, there, there's only so much NFT activity that happens on BNB. Like, it's not very much. Most of it's on ETH. And so now we'll be able to get a piece of that. Without having to take our token and, you know, migrate it. Right? We'll be able to benefit from these different chains using our utilities without having to go through that whole massive migration. Yeah, exactly. Big picture stuff. Awesome, guys. Well, guys, we're running at... Uh... Well, as usual, going into uh, what is it, three and a half hours. <laughs> there goes that time frame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm curious to know once we do get, uh, you know, the you know Loon Sky Live and all stuff, what that's going to look like for the space. So, um, well, everybody just better take the day off because it's probably going to be a long one. There we go, man. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take the day off. I, I meant take the day off of your work and your personal life because the space is, is going to be a long one. It's going to be popping. It's going to be popping. It's going to be a 16-hour yeah, I mean, thing that day. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. We're working shifts. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. For anyone that's, that's following me on Twitter and all the nonsense that I do on Twitter, I mean, you'll notice that most of my engagement is not with B&B crowd at all. Right? So I'm, I'm mainly hanging out with the ETH crowd. It's for a reason. It's deliberate. Like, I, I'm not on Twitter for fun. You know, as much as, uh, as entertaining as it sometimes can be, I'm not doing it for fun. It's deliberate. This is because you're a seal, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I noticed the uh, the change of the of the PFP. It's it's all strategic. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, if some folks pay attention. If you're not paying attention, I, just, I look like an idiot, and that's cool too. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is a plan, and it is deliberate. He's deceptively methodical. Yeah, I mean, look at. I mean, he gets. Rocket gets what twice, probably twice more engagement than I do, and I got, you know, three times the the, the followings, um, that 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 he does. So you just look at it, you know, and that's why he's doing that, you know. Um, 
I mean, especially with these NFT projects and the ETH projects, the connections that he's making and stuff, you know. So now when he you know, puts out a tweet, it'll come across their thing. You know, even, you know, a lot of the big names, too. They're friends of friends. And it, it, it comes across. Um, and his engagement is outstanding on Twitter. Like I said, it's for a reason. Um, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's, it's been, been a tremendous been a year in the making. It's been a year in the making. Like the, yeah, the you, moment that we started Luna Sky, that's, that's about when I started infiltrating the Ethereum community. Okay. Gonna be okay. fun. Well, gonna be uh, fun. Well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and, and wrap it up. I wanna say thank you uh, to Cody, Rocket, Paul, uh, Bard, CWP, Zelda, I Savior for coming up and uh, spending your day and coming up to talk. I appreciate the questions and very, very much. And let me just go through real quick. Michael Garber, of course, Joel M, Evergrow Crater, thank you so much. Monty Bucks, as usual, in Sam We Trust. And Scott Sturgis, we got Will Gracious and EGC Rubicon. Drakus, thank you so much again. Big B, Taxi Man, and a couple of new uh, ISG Metaverse. Who else we got here? HP, HP, Moz, and Crypto Profit, and Insignificant Cog. Thank you for being here again. G07, Liam, and who else we got? A couple more, and then I got to run. Dwayne Hilzer, thanks for being here. K and Kilo Delta Bravo. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Appreciate you spending your Saturday with us. Hope, thank you all for joining, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. It's a very, very great weekend for you guys. And again, happy Canada Day for the Canadian listeners and for the U.S. crowd. Happy Fourth to you all. Let's do this again next weekend, and hopefully, we have some more juicy news to share with you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it so much. Happy 4th. Happy Canada Day, everybody. Take care, everyone. Happy holidays. Bye, (laughs) y'all. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a great day. Bye for now.